Good evening, everyone. I'd like to reconvene City Council, successor agency to the Westminster Redevelopment Agency meeting right now, 7 39 p.m. Uh, Wednesday, October 13, 2021. 20, Roll call, please. Mayor Top? Here. Yeah. Vice Mayor Wynn? Here. Yeah. Council Member Doe? I'm here. Council Member Ho? Here. And Council Member Monzo? I'm here. All members of the Council present. Thank you so much. Next, we have salute to the flat will be Council Member Doe, and invocation will be City Attorney. So please stand. Council Member Doe? Yeah, give me uh, one second, please. Okay, please uh, stand up with your right hand in your heart. So repeat after me. Um, ready? Begin. I bless allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Please bow your heads. <clears throat> Heavenly Father, we, uh, we thank you once again for the opportunity to come and conduct the people's business uh, in this meeting tonight. We ask that you would uh, be with us, guide us, be with the council, staff, and the members of the public as we seek to uh, consider each item on the agenda. And we just ask that you'd help uh, us to have the wisdom that is necessary in order to do good for the city. And we commit this evening to you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Council Member Doe and City Attorney. Uh, next, we have City Attorney close section report. Uh, there were a number of items considered and discussed. The council provided uh, direction. Uh, there's nothing to report from closed session. Thank you so much. Next, we have ex parte communication. I see none. Let's see the clerk report. Yes, I'd like to introduce Emergency Services Coordinator Robert Acosta to give us a COVID update. Please. Good evening. Can you hear me okay? Yes. Okay, thank, thank you. Thank you. I apologize. I'm having a little trouble on my computer and I'm joining you on my phone. So I hope the audio is okay. But um, good evening, Mr. Uh, Mayor, Council, and staff. Um, as you are aware, I'm Robert Acosta, I'm the Emergency Services Coordinator, and I'm just going to provide a brief update uh, for COVID as a lot of this, um, the administrative stuff is in a status quo right now, as I'll talk about in a minute. <clears throat> First, about COVID update. Since last August, we have seen a steady decline of COVID cases in Orange County. And for the month of October, case rates have stabilized relative to our previous surge. Additionally, hospitalizations continue to drop. And today, as of today, we have 205 patients hospitalized for COVID, and we haven't seen numbers that low since, since mid-July. Even though we've seen a significant improvement, it is worth noting that if the CDPH is blueprint for a safer economy colored tier system was still in place, Orange County would still be in the red tier. It's, we definitely have seen an improvement, but um, there's still a substantial spread going on out there. So that makes it important to continue to adhere to basic work, basic precautions that are still in place within our workforce. Recently, uh, we've been starting to see a divergence or this, um, CDC is starting to see a divergence in the COVID models that are used to predict future outbreaks. Previously, as you may recall, in my last report, there was unanimous agreement that late fall, early winter, we were likely to see another surge. Now, many prediction models are in conflict with some models showing a continued downward trend through the new year. With th that's a positive and with the continued adherence to basic precautions and continuation of the vaccine effort, we may be able to avoid that late fall, early winter surge. We're still awaiting guidance from OSHA and CDPH on the school and workplace mandates for vaccines and uh, proof of vaccination. The draft plan is currently being refined uh, by a working group for OSHA, and we expect it to be public in the very near future. 
But at this time, we're still in the status quo and working off our own guidelines. Internally, we have one employee that's out due to COVID, and we expect that employee to be back in the next few days. And fortunately, we've had no new cases over the last uh, several weeks now. The vaccine rate, uh, we continue to see slow, steady increase in people receiving vaccines. Internally, our workforce, we're a little bit over 50% of our vaccinated. And we had some as recently as today receive their boosters um, uh, in, internally. Citywide, of the population over 12 years of age and older, 80%, 87% of our residents have received at least one dose. This is up a few percent since the last report. So there's this, just a steady, slow, steady improvement on the vaccine effort, and that's good news. That's the end of the report, and I'm open to any questions if there are any. Mr. Costa, really thank you for your report. Do we have any other questions and concerns from members of the City Council? All right, I see none. So next we have uh, City Manager report. Oh, City Clerk report. Anything else from City Clerk? If not, no. then uh, uh, City Manager report. Yes, thank you, um, Mayor and members of the Council. So just a couple of things to report on tonight. Our Community Services Department's been busy, so there are a few things um, coming up. First, uh, the Family Resource Center is hosting a Safe tr uh, Streets and Safe Streets and Treats event on Friday, October 29th over at Sigler Park from 3 to 4 p.m. So families can come on by. It's basically a trunk and treat event uh, with crafts and activities, completely outdoors. Um, and then right after that event, the Family Resource Center, um, after the Family Resource Center, families can head on over to the Sunken Gardens here over at the Civic Center, and we'll be showing a Halloween movie night featuring Hotel Transylvania that will start at dusk. And that's also on, again, Friday, October 29th. Um, there'll also be a little mini resource fair and treats starting at 530 um, at that event. Um, for veterans, um, you know, since we have Veterans Day coming up, the city, uh, the community services department has uh, created veteran signs. Um, so signs that veterans can essentially put on their, their lawns and display at their homes. Signs are gonna be distributed to, distributed from community services to any resident veteran uh, who would like a sign. So you can contact them at 714-895-2860. Uh, did that last year and it was wildly popular and a great way to, to honor you know, our local uh, servicemen and women. Um, today, the uh, Westminster Police Department held their coffee uh, with a cop event, and it was uh, successful. And um, so, thank you for every, and thank you to everyone for for showing up to that. It's something that the police department holds um, occasionally to uh, just to you know get out there and uh, put faces to to badges and just meet the community. Um, on as well as uh, this month being October, the police department um, through the Police Officers Association they are selling. Um, little pink patches and canine pink patches that you can buy, as well as little patch keychains. Um, you can contact, um, Kel uh, let's see, the property technician at 714-548-3216. All proceeds go to uh, the Susan G. Komen Foundation, and that's for October Breast Cancer Awareness um, Month. So all funds will go to that. Uh, other than that, um, I have nothing else to report. Thank you so much, our in-room uh, city manager. So next we have- oh, Sorry, I'm so sorry. I did have one more thing to report. Okay. <laughs> I apologize. It's, it's just definitely have a lot going on. Um, so we actually have some special guests today. Uh, we wanted to provide an update uh, regarding the uh, 405 freeway project. We're about at the halfway point. And so we felt like this would be a good opportunity to let you all um, and the community know uh, where we are in that process. So at this time, I would like to present, um, I'd like to introduce transportation manager, uh, Adolfo Zeta, OCTA program manager, Jeff Mills, and OCTA community relations officer, uh, Chris Bookley, um, who are all here and will be providing um, providing you all with some um, 405 project news. Thank you, Christine. Um, it's a pleasure to be here tonight, uh, Mayor and City Council members, um, ladies and gentlemen. Um, I'd like to introduce Jeff Mills and Chris Bookley. They're our partners in this project. Um, I'm gonna turn it over to them for the first portion of the presentation, which is an overview of the project from the OCTA uh, perspective. 
And then I'll conclude the presentation by speaking on the city's perspective and some of the priorities that we're working to achieve for the community. Um, before I turn it over to Jeff, just two bullets to keep in mind. It's a $2 billion project. Most of it is happening in Westminster. It's currently the largest infrastructure project under construction in the state of California. So there's big things happening here in the city, big improvements coming our way. And like Christine said, we are halfway through. At this point, uh, Jeff Mills, uh, would you like to take it away? Thank you, Adolfo, and good evening, Mayor and City Council members. Uh, again, I'm Jeff Mills, OCTA's Program Manager for this project. And joining me to present the last uh, two slides of the presentation is Chris Bookley from OCTA's outreach team. Uh, thank you for the opportunity to be here, and we will be providing an update regarding this project as a whole, and more specifically, what is happening in Westminster. And first, I'd like to thank city staff, including Adolfo and the entire city team for working closely with OCTA as we continue to work hard to get the project completed as quickly as possible while minimizing impacts to the city's residents and businesses. I'd like to start with a little bit of background on slide two. As shown on the left, the project limits are from approximately State Route 73 in Costa Mesa and up to I-605 in Seal Beach, a length of approximately 16 miles. And as shown on the right, one regular lane will be added in each direction of the 405 consistent with measure M as depicted in yellow. An additional lane will be added in each direction that will combine with the existing carpool lane to provide dual express lanes from State Route 73 to I-605 as depicted in green. There are also significant improvements to the local streets that go up and over the freeway, and I'll re review these a little bit later in the presentation. As Adolfo mentioned, the overall cost of the project is just over $2 billion. Slide three is focused on the wall construction. Uh, the photo on the left reflects one of the aesthetic patterns being placed on new retaining walls within the city. And the photo on the right reflects the aesthetic, aesthetic pat pattern being placed on all new sound walls. A majority of the walls will be complete on the project by the end of this year. Moving to slide four, the next several slides will show some construction activities on the bridges in Westminster going from south to north. Uh, so the photo on the left on this slide is of the completed Magnolia Bridge. And the photo on the right is of the new Heil Pedestrian Bridge that connects Westminster and Huntington Beach. The Heil Pedestrian Bridge is anticipated to be complete by the end of this year. On slide five, the slow photo on the left shows a concrete pour on the Edinger Bridge. The Edinger Bridge is anticipated to be the next bridge to open to traffic in early December. The photo on the right shows ongoing construction at the beach interchange. The improvements being made at the beach interchange and on beach itself will improve safety and traffic operations on this important local street when completed. On slide six, the photo on the left shows the new McFadden Bridge that was completed in 2020 and is open to traffic. The photo on the right reflects construction on the second half of the Bolsa Bridge. On slide seven, the photo on the left shows construction of the underground steel piles that will support the Golden West bridge columns in the middle of the freeway. So this photo really illustrates the constrained space that is available to work in the middle of the freeway when building those bridge columns. The photo on the right is of the Edwards Bridge that was recently opened to traffic just this past month. Slide eight shows the second half of the new Westminster Bridge being constructed on the left. And on the right is a photo of the Springdale Bridge being demolished recently after the opening of the Edwards Bridge. Slide nine shows construction of the second half of the Bolsa Chica Bridge. The crane shown on the left is lifting the concrete girders into place that will support the new concrete bridge deck. And then the photo on the right shows the concrete bridge deck being constructed earlier this month. The Bolsa Chica Bridge is anticipated to fully open to traffic around the end of this year. Slide 10 provides a status of the bridge construction within or near the city. As uh, Adolfo mentioned, um, 
there's more construction within the city of Westminster and more bridges within the city of Westminster than any other uh, city within the corridor. So starting at the bottom of this list, in order to again go from south to north, the Magnolia Bridge is complete and open to traffic. The Heil Pedestrian Bridge is anticipated to be open by the end of December. The Newland Bridge will be closed for construction in December after the Edinger Bridge is open to traffic. Beach is unique in that the road goes under the freeway, but the work on Beach Boulevard itself and the ramps is anticipated to be complete in mid-2022. Going up the list, the McFadden Bridge is open to traffic. The Bolsa Bridge is anticipated to fully open to traffic in late 2022. The Golden West Bridge is anticipated to fully open to traffic in mid-2022. The Edwards Bridge is currently open to traffic. The Westminster Bridge is anticipated to be fully open in mid-2022. And the Springdale Bridge is anticipated to be open in early 2023. And finally, the Bolsa Chica Bridge is anticipated to be open by the end of December, as I mentioned a little bit earlier. So in summary, we expect to be complete with six of the bridges going over the freeway in Fountain in Westminster, excuse me, uh, by the end of this year. One of the things that I like most about this project is that in addition to creating a freeway that is safer and can move more traffic, it also has tremendous benefits to the local street system. More specifically, the local street bridges that go up and over the freeway are being rebuilt to their ultimate width and will include bike lanes and sidewalks on both sides that will better accommodate active transportation modes such as bikes and pedestrians. This slide shows that many of the old bridges did not have sidewalks on both sides and very few, uh, only one had bike lanes. The new, the new bridges will generally have sidewalks and bike lanes on both sides of the street. We are also adding additional through lanes on the bridges at Bolsa Chica, Golden West, Bolsa, McFadden, Newland, and Magnolia that will help improve the traffic operations on these local streets near the freeway. The graphic on slide uh, 12 kind of zooms back out for the whole project for a moment and shows the completed bridges in green, the bridges under construction in orange, and the one bridge at Newland that has not started construction yet in red. OCTA has been working closely with city staff for many, many years preparing for and now implementing the construction phase of this project. Coordination efforts have increased over the last few years as we have started major construction activities. Throughout the project's lifetime, coordination with the city staff has gone well and your staff has been both supportive and responsive. Through our cooperative agreement with the city, OCTA is paying for city staff's time when they work on project related issues. The transportation management plan and maintenance of traffic task force guide the sequencing of our bridge construction to minimize impacts to local traffic. And through our utility agreements, OCTA is paying for water line relocations required by the reconstruction of the bridges which will provide the city with new water lines in those areas of relocation. OCTA continues to meet with the emergency service providers and school districts throughout the corridor to ensure their needs are met during construction. This includes, when necessary, running a shuttle service for students that may go to school on the other side of the freeway, but a bridge is closed during construction. At this point, I'd like to ask Chris Bukley from OCTA to discuss our public outreach efforts. Thank you, Jeff. Uh, good evening, Mayor and members of the City Council. Uh, as Jeff mentioned, uh, my name is Chris Bukley and I oversee community outreach for the project. As you can see from this slide, we connect with the community in a variety of ways, uh, both in print and digitally. For major activities like bridge demolition and pile driving, we canvas flyers, distributing an average of about 55,000 each month. We also provide regular updates by email, on social media, and on our project website, which receives about 1,300 unique visitors each month. 
And we have our interactive map at octa.net forward slash 405 map. Each month, about 6,700 users access the map to find closure and detour information, which is also available on the navigation app Waze. In addition, we have dedicated helplines and staff for Vietnamese and Spanish speakers, and we connect with several faith-based and community-based organizations to get the word out about the project. But finally, we have our neighborhood meetings. We've conducted more than a dozen during the past year with residents, business owners, and key stakeholders. These virtual meetings drew more than 3,300 people who either participated live or viewed recordings afterward on OCTA's YouTube channel. Next slide, please. We'll leave this up for a bit. Uh, if you have a specific question, uh, if anybody, a member of the public has a specific question or concern, we urge you to call our project helplines, uh, email us at 405project at octa.net. Uh, if we don't have an answer for your question at the time, we'll work with our colleagues on the technical team to get you one. Uh, that is the end of my presentation. And now Adolfo is going to share his. Thank you, Jeff and Chris. I'm gonna go attempt to share my screen now. Can you give me a thumbs up, Christine? All right. So um, the, the last portion of the presentation is really gonna focus on the city of Westminster's, um, from, the, from the city of Westminster side, right? Like what does the 405 project uh, mean to the city? What does it mean to the staff? And what other improvements have we been able to achieve by working collaboratively with OCTA, who is the project manager? and Caltrans, who is the facility owner. Um, this project is funded with, uh, with local OCTA tax money, and OCTA, again, is the project manager. Over the years, uh, the biggest misconception is that this project is a Caltrans project. It's an OCTA project. The county's decided to be um, proactive in uh, laying out a map for its future as far as transportation is concerned. And uh, this is tax money, OCTA tax money that is, that is uh, that is making this project a reality for the most part. Um, before I move on, I'd like to acknowledge our staff. Um, every department and every division in the city has had a hand in working on this project. We have, um, from processing timesheets to getting the word out through our communications folks, uh, police department of health and enforcement, um, every single department has had a hand in this. There is uh, actively employees working day and night on this project that our city of Westminster staff, whether it's um, water lines or transportation issues and bridge demolitions, we have been a part of every step of this project for the last 16 years. And that's something that I'm very proud of as a member of the city team. Um, Jeff did a great job on providing an overview of the key project features, so I won't spend too much time on that, but Jeff um, was correct. 12 bridges in Westminster of the 18. So most of this $2 billion project is happening here in Westminster. That leads to great opportunities for the city. Um, from the very beginning, we have been very proactive in our process and in our thinking. Our mentality has really been about advanced planning. Um, we've been working on this project for 16 years. It takes a while to get to where we are now, which is in full construction mode. Um, back when the project was first in preliminary design, we identified approximately $9.4 million of city infrastructure, some of which Jeff already discussed, utility relocations, uh, there's plenty of water lines in the area that are impacted, including water lines that run through the old bridges that needed to be relocated. Originally, that was a cost that was going to be borne by the city. Um, we worked with OCTA um, to have the project fund these improvements. So water lines in the city that are aged that needed to be uh, improved are being improved as part of this project. And it's part of the project budget, not part of the city budget, to make this a reality. The next three pots of money really um, identify um, areas and allocations that have been set aside for us to cover our staff times. Whether it's early in the preliminary, preliminary engineering phase of the project, there was $100,000 available to the city. Um, currently, under the utility agreement, as construction of utility lines are being um, improved or replaced, we have a pot of money there as well. The largest pot of money comes under the OCTA cooperative agreement. Everything from reviewing, um, legal reviews, planning review, um, traffic management, police services, all of that is coming out of that. The $3.7 million includes the million dollars that is um, 
um, on the consent calendar tonight for additional funding that is coming our way to continue to support the project. Um, I'm gonna walk you through the typical mindset, uh, typical process for how we have approached each of these bridge demolitions. And we've really viewed them from, uh, from the perspective of a, having a huge opportunity. 16 years ago, we were told every bridge was gonna be replaced as part of this project. So we had some time for strategic planning and that's what we did. We took all the time we needed to work with OCTA and our stakeholders and our different divisions, different disciplines within the city. You have a very talented staff that have put their heads together to identify ways to improve um, community infrastructure, get the word out to the community. And I know I'm a little bit biased when it comes to transportation, but the biggest impact and the biggest focus when it comes to these types of projects is the ability to mitigate transportation impacts and maintain quality, quality of life for its residents during construction. This is a photo that I took a few weeks ago of the Spring, uh, Springdale Bridge demolition. Um, at this night, um, the bridge came down over two nights. It takes 18 months to build. So that's kind of an interesting anecdote for this project. A bridge that takes uh, 18 months to build can come down in, in two nights. This is the demolition effort that took place. On that night, all freeway traffic is diverted onto city streets and OCTA, OC405, which is the contractor, and city staff were, were working all night to ensure that the detours were effective and that again, quality of life for our residents was maintained. This is a, a picture of the day after. So bridge deck is gone, most of, the, most of the bridge is gone. At this point, really, we start to look at what an 18 month construction effort looks like. Um, traffic mitigation is ongoing. That's something that's important for me to convey to the community and to the council. We don't just walk away from a bridge demo and hope for the best. We monitor it every day and we do it as a team, uh, Jeff and Chris, and the city team, we work together to make sure that we are constantly improving the detour efforts and mitigating traffic throughout the city as it pertains to different demolition projects. This is really a culmination, and this is a, something that I'm very proud of that we've achieved as a team. Um, we identified project opportunities early on. Um, OCTA's focus is to design and build the project um, on time and under budget. Uh, the city is committed to supporting the project, but we also did not want to miss any opportunity to improve uh, the lives and the infrastructure, the quality of life of Westminster residents. Um, so we've been working with OCTA collectively over the years on four key components, really, the transportation improvements. I won't read through all of those. Um, the main ones to keep in mind is we've, we've, we've widened roadways to the ultimate capacity. Every signal is going to be improved. That means every, every pole that's out there that's 50 years old with old wiring, all of that is gonna get revamped. It's gonna look like a brand new intersection, a brand new street, new equipment. Interchanges and ramp configurations have been, have been addressed. Lane drops in the form of merge lanes, those have been reconfigured. And um, really focusing on the complete street concept, which is addressing the needs of all users, not just motorists, but also focusing on pedestrians and bicyclists. That's something that we've also put a lot of thought into. And is, and is being achieved as part of the project. Water relocations, our water department is fabulous. They are very responsive. They're out there in the middle of the night supporting these efforts. Like I said before, a lot of money in water lines is, is coming to the city as part of the 405 project. And sound walls. Sound wall was not, a, was not an original component of the project. We worked with OCTA board of directors and our council over the course of many years to um, have sound wall replacement be a part of this project. And I think it's turning out very well. And then other opportunities, we're looking at opportunities to improve some of the parks that are along the freeway, which is exciting to our residents. I'll go through a few aerial exhibits, aerial photos here, just to identify some typical um, improvements um, in, in transportation in this particular area is uh, focusing on Golden West and Bolsa over by the mall. The bridges are widened, the ramps are reconfigured, the signals are replaced. Um, very, very timely considering we're working on a mall project, we're working on a mall specific plan. If the mall intensifies, um, there will be no impacts to these roadways because they will be widened as part of this project. This is typically the most difficult component uh, when redeveloping a site is when a developer looks at what impacts offsite would need to be compensated by the developer. In this particular case, the 405 project is coming through, widening this particular area, 
improving it in a way that we can re redevelop them all without introducing any um, traffic impacts to the area. We're looking at some of these on-ramp and off-ramp uh, intersections. This is over on the west side of town, Bolsa Chica and Old Bolsa Chica. Those slip ramps, uh, some people love them, some people don't. They're actually um, going to be realigned into a T intersection. There's gonna be a new traffic signal there. It's gonna make uh, mobility a lot smoother and safety for the pedestrians, um, which is key on this project. Um, this is an example of strategic planning on the part of the city. OCTA worked with, Westminster worked with OCTA probably 10 years ago uh, ahead of this construction effort. You see at the bottom there, there's a circle, a yellow circle. That's a, that arrow is, uh, is what we would identify a lane marking indicating a lane drop. So if you're traveling north on Bolsa Chica, you go from three lanes to two lanes because the roadway north of Duncannon uh, was not widened. Uh, we obtained grant money from OCTA years ahead of the project to widen Bolsa Chica. So this will no longer be a lane drop. Lane drops usually lead to traffic collisions. So this is uh, making the roadway safer. Again, an, an example of advanced planning as it relates to this project. Oops, let me go back to that. Um, so Westminster Willow area, there's some, I will just call it um, old freeway configurations that exist in the city that we're cleaning up. Um, if you look at the bottom of your screen, there's an off ramp. Many, many, many people in the region call it the in and out off ramp because it takes you right to in and out. But what it also does is it dumps you directly onto a street. So you're going from, you know, 65 miles per hour on the freeway to a ramp, all of a sudden being dumped onto a city street. That off ramp is going to be uh, removed. Improvements to the cul-de-sac will be made and folks will be able to access the area through a new traffic signal that's located that you can uh, that's seen here by the, with the icon in the middle of the screen. So again, mobility improvements, um, old design standards are being upgraded to the latest and greatest. Park improvements is something that we looked at very closely. The area, the area highlighted here uh, with the circle in yellow is a open open channel open channel um, system that had been in place for many years in city right of way. So today, if you drive there, if you drive over in that area, you'll see that it is now underground. So it's a box channel that's underground. And um, we approached OCTA with the opportunity to expand Margie L. Rice Park to create additional park space for our community. They were supportive of that. And we're currently working on plans to improve um, and enhance Margie L. Rice Park. We're also not identified here. You'll see that there's a lack of um, sidewalk along the frontage of Margie L. Rice Park. That's something that we're also working on with OCTA very closely. Another park opportunity appeared, uh, uh, became present to us here and near the intersection of Westminster Springdale. Cascade Park is uh, formerly uh, sat on state right of way and it was a long-term lease for the city of Westminster. Um, through the project, we engaged Caltrans with the help of OCTA and we're in the process of purchasing Cascade Park to include it to its list of city parks at a very reasonable cost. So we're very happy to report that as well to the members of the community. Sound wall improvements, this, this is a real success story. I recall standing here with Chris Buckley many years ago and with his predecessors and hearing the concerns of the community, um, the sound wall was not high enough. The sound wall, the previous sound wall was a cor um, corroded at the bottom. Um, it needed to be replaced. So this is over by Milan, uh, the west side of town. Um, we worked with OCTA and they delivered a brand new sound wall uh, at a higher elevation than what it was before. And can, this is a picture I took a few months ago when uh, the flat work sidewalk had just been poured. So I met with community members on that day. They remembered me, they remembered Chris. Uh, and it's just another example of, of a promise delivered to the community. Sometimes uh, other things happen. Um, we discover that vegetation along a corridor is more important and more useful than we, than we ever thought it would, it would be. Um, this area was cleared as part of the widening effort, um, exposing some of the community members here to noise and visibility issues. Um, and we worked with OCTA to devise a, a community wall. This is a still image from the CCTV camera I captured this morning. The wall is currently being constructed. This is uh, something Chris Buckley and I worked on um, almost daily for quite some time. And community members are very uh, happy that the community wall is on its way. And um, we are very appreciative to OCTA for, for working with us on this. 
So before I conclude, I just want to point out advanced planning is the key to the success of this project. Uh, collaboration is going to continue between the two agencies. We're at the halfway mark. And we're very excited uh, to continue to uh, deliver a good product to the community and to the region. Uh, and thank you again, Jeff and Chris, for joining us tonight. Christine. Right, I want to thank uh, our staff in uh, OCTA uh, program manager for providing really good and detailed presentation. That's amazing. So uh, you all explain, you know, what happening in. Uh, freeway and what is the uh, uh what is the future outcome going to be you know i really appreciate that so do we have any out do we have any concerns do we have any questions for octa and our traffic uh, manager um thank you mayor um i just want to thank uh chris and jeff uh, for your collaboration with our city and our city staffs uh, working so hard to, to think of every aspect of the project, how it, not only that it, does it um, make our roadways uh, safer, wider, but also the aesthetically making our city look better. Uh, the beautification of the details on the walls and and uh, there's something that I, I think uh, Adolfo didn't mention it, but maybe some artwork also is gonna be implemented in there. Right. So, I mean, this team, uh, with Jeff and, and and Chris and our staff has really took a really deep dive in this project and make sure they think of everything. Um, the thing that's amazing to me is that, you know, I, I was out there for uh, a night for a demolition of, um, I think it was the Westminster Bridge. And it's amazing to me to, to see all that happen. It was just like, I guess I best describe it as controlled chaos. And then it's, it's amazing to see how the next morning, it looks like nothing happened. You know, it's all cleaned up and the freeway is open again and traffic's flowing. It's pretty amazing to see that. Um, but anyways, thank you all you guys for all your hard work and your dedication to this project and to our city. Really appreciate it. Thank you. Yeah, I'd like to make a quick comment, if I may. Um, you know, I just wanna thank uh, Jeff and Chris from the uh, um, OCTA and uh, Adolfo uh, for the presentation. Uh, this is amazing. I remember when they were back in uh, 2018, there was a lot of complaint on the west side regarding that uh, south wall that, that uh, Adolfo just showed a, a, a picture from that um, um, freeway cam. And there was a lot of complaint. I was I had an earful of that too. So I remember uh, talking to that Adolfo and a lot of residents and, uh, you know, and I really excited to see that, you know, we would keep the promise, really take care and care of the, the resident concern and, and actively uh, solve that problem and, and uh, take care of that and build that um, cell wall. That's, uh, that's pretty good. It's just it's amazing. It just blew my mind to see the presentation and, and understood the, uh, the scope of this project. It's unbelievable. I did not realize that the majority of the project is in within the uh, city of Westminster, you know, that's a great job. I'm a, you know, wonderful job. Good job, uh, um, Adafo. Thank you. All right. Well, thank you so much for that. Anything else? If not, so I think we have all the communication. So this is the time of the meeting that members of the public may address the city council regarding any items on the agenda or non-agenda items that are within the subject matter jurisdiction. At this time, I will be reading e-comments received as well as allowing members of the public to speak for a total of five minutes. So at this time, if anyone would like to speak, please raise your hand and when I call your name, I will allow you to speak. So if I could please ask the interpreter to translate that. Well, lúc này nếu có quý vị nào muốn phát biểu thì xin quý vị giơ tay lên bằng cách sờ vào cái hình của cái bàn biểu tượng bàn tay ở trên màn hình à, để chúng tôi biết là quý vị muốn phát biểu. Okay. So the only e-comment that was received was from Lillian Pham. And to summarize, she expressed concern regarding the city's finances used to subsidize council member Ho's beauty pageant and council member Ho's involvement with the pageant. There were no additional e-comments received. 
Um, I did receive requests to speak in advance. So at this time I will be calling their names followed by the list of attendees. So the first speaker would be Hung Nguyen. I think he's that KBCHN1. Hung? Người đầu tiên phát biểu ngày hôm nay sẽ là ông Hùng Nguyễn. À, xin ông Hùng Nguyễn bật cái micro lên và cho biết là ông có cần à, được sự trợ giúp của người Hồng Dịch Thiên Cô. Ok, we'll come back to him. Next speaker would be Fat Bui. Can you hear me? Yes. Ok. Good evening, mayors and council members. I'm speaking tonight as a community leader. There are certain issues in the Westminster city and local cities that are of concern to us all. And it is my responsibility as, com as a community leader, as well as many others, to address our concerns to the city council in hope that you have our inputs to make the best decision for Westminster city and for our community as a whole. With that, I would like to bring your focus to two issues of concern. One dearly to the Vietnamese veterans and political refugees. The others, a great concern for, all, for us all, and it might be a violation of state law. So firstly, regarding the resolution for Ngo Thanh Vân that was quietly handed to Ms. Ngo Thanh Vân without the knowledge of other members of the council. Let it be clear on the record that this is not a personal resolution of Mayor Ta. It is a formal resolution of commendation by the city of Westminster on city official resolution papers, in which it stated as follow. Now, therefore, I, Chita, Mayor of the city of Westminster, on behalf of Vice Mayor Kimberly Hall and Council Member Sergio Cancaras, Tai Do and Chi Charlie Nguyen do hereby commend Ngo Thanh Vân, also known as Veronica Ngo, for her blah, 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 and I will not going to repeat that here. This resolution was on the official city resolution paper, and it referenced all the council members. It is clearly not a personal resolution. It reflects the proclamation of the city of Westminster. I sincerely hope tonight, Mayor Ta and all four council members, that you would stand together, nullifying the No Time One Resolution to send a strong message, loud and clear, to the propaganda mill of the communist government of Vietnam that West Minister is still standing with the community. And on the second issue, related to the sales of the land with the address 13900 Monroe Street, Westminster City. It is now revealed to us that this address is that of the Liberty Park of the city of Westminster. Furthermore, it was transferred in the summer of 2016 via a sneaky process where the quit claim was listed under consent calendar altogether mingled with other routine items. There are various issues that given rise to possible criminal conduct as it violates state law Government Code Section 38440, 38462, which mandated that parkland can only be sold after a formal notice and a public hearing pursuant to this article. The, uh, and also a determination that the exchange is in the public interest. Failure to comply to the Section 38441 above by snubbing it under the Consent calendar clearly show an intention to deceive the public trust and this action to put it in consent item for routine matters must be originated by some member high up in the city ranks. As only city manager, city clerk, and the mayor would have the authority to direct council agenda. Furthermore, the recipients of the properties have questionable relationship with the Council member Tyler Diep and Mayor Chita, as their campaign offices for the past few elections 
are on the second floor of the first bank. The owner of the property where the piece of land uh, was transferred to them. It was just right next to it. Now, uh, the sale of this 10,200 square feet land was sold off for only $100,000. Looking at the Orange County accessor record, it showed that the similar residential property about the same size at the address 8232 18th Street. The 2016 tax record showed that the Orange County tax assessor determined the value of the land is for almost $450,000, four times as high. And the building value of the two structure on that piece of land is about $420,000. And that was only value as a residential uh, property. If it is a commercial, in this case, where the that, your, uh, your time is up. Sure, thank you. Let me go back to Hung Win. So at this time, if anybody else would like to speak, please raise your hand. Lúc này nếu mà có quý vị nào muốn phát biểu, xin quý vị giơ tay lên và quý vị có thể giơ tay lên bằng cách sờ vào cái biểu tượng của cái bàn tay ở trên màn hình của quý vị. Hello, hello. Can you hear me? Yeah, Mr. Yes. Norman. Hello. We can, can hear you. Yeah. Uh, can we start now? Yes. Okay. The Honorable Mayor Guitar, Honorable City Council Member. Honorable city manager and city lawyer. A letter of a suggestion. Lady and gentlemen, I am Nguyen Phuong Hong, a resident of 14362 Busha Street, Speed 93, Westminster, California 92683. Writing this letter to help several of the following items proposed to be listed on the agenda of today's city meeting. In my opinion, had done a great deal of damage to save our reputation and a community. In section 5.5, why the city not been able to find a city manager for nearly two years? It is time for Major Chita to mobilize or pressure to put his people like too tight and tidy up to be easy manipulated. Section 5.6, High uh, an independent external investigate agency to examine the allegations made by Council Member Kimberly Hall during the September 8, 2021 interview on Little Saigon TV and also on the um, October uh, 9, I think, excuse me, October 7, 2021. Press conference at the Vietnamese Press Club in the Garden Grove. In the section 5.7, can public land like a library park have a right to sell? Why is the selling price of $100,000? Why the market price is from $350,000 to $550,000? Why is the address 13900 Monroe Street instead of a city address. It is, is it possible to deceive residents without grant public land? Section 5.8, I agree to withdraw the certificate of merit of my mission, Ngo Thanh Vân, because the combination board will disagree with the member title, Sergio Contreras and Kibli Ho. So there are only two members agreeing to be Mayor Chita and Vice Mayor Charlie Ching Wen. Worse still, the mayor signed the name alone, but use the name of Westminster City Council without consulting the other four members of the house, an act of appro appropriating or impersonating a senator. In a California court, civil court, she at a CIV 3344. Any person knowledge you and know the person name, voice, signature, 
photography or similar image in any way or in product, good and merchandise. So uh, I don't need to read the whole thing and I think everybody knows that. In section 6.3, I support. Section 6.4, <clears throat> and I agree with the detail in section 67. Actually, I want to mention in uh, 67, must meet the signature of the member or vote three, two, and um, especially, especially must be using English as the primary language on the document. No other language are using, like uh, Major Chita gave it to Chiang uh, Quốc Huy a couple of weeks ago. In section 6.5, I endorse rotating major for one or two year term. In section 7.1, it sinks the launch and agree to move the Quang Chi monument to the San Jose. I think this community no longer sit in the Westminster and at the same time proposal to rename it Westminster City Monument Committee instead of Quang Chi Monument Committee. Speaking of Quang Chi Monument, I have a question that I hope you and the Westminster City Council will answer at the follow. Last week, I received a message that dropped on my email system, a document certifying that Wang Chi Victory Foundation is an agency with a tax exemption regulation 501c3, whose recipient is lawyer Nguyen Quoc Luân. Why is the letter head of the letter of Ohio State IRS, not a California? Your time Please. is up. Okay, uh, thank you very much. Next speaker is Terry Rains. Hello, too many agenda items, too little time to speak. Yes to item 3.5, Saturday night munchies outside City Hall. Item 5.2, why weren't these two new water positions requested in the 21-22 budget a few months ago? Item 5.6 is the English translation of Councilwoman Ho's set TV interview from August. Ho, the mayor and the vice mayor have all been on Vietnamese media since discussing city business, but never in English, unacceptable. These allegations are serious. If council launches an investigation, everyone's actions should be reviewed. Item 5.7, Councilwoman Ho wants to review a 2016 sale of a portion of Liberty Park to STT Westminster Property LLC for $100,000 via a quick claim deed agendized and approved on the July 27, 2016 count, consent calendar. Not mentioned here are two earlier closed session meetings about it. First on January 27, 2016, with all council members present, Ta, Contreras, Kerry, Dip, and Rice, and City Attorney Bettenhausen. And then on March 27, 2016, with all council members present, except Rice and City Attorney Jones. The July 27 consent calendar was approved 401 with Dip abstaining. The agenda descriptions never mentioned STT. STT. The 10,200 square foot parcel is number 9740128, not 22, per the online assessor map and tax info. Current tax valuation is $273,411. $273, How did the city justify selling at only $9.80 per square foot when local raw commercial land was selling for $19 to $55 per square foot in 2016? Who decided part of our public park was excess property? Was it advertised for sale? How did STT get involved? STT has since sold this property with the parcel to VMBDS LLC on June 30th of this year. The parcel has not been developed. The sale to STT did not spur economic growth other than maybe in Mr. Tong's wallet, nor has it been positive has it positively impacted the surrounding park area? All things staff claim would happen. A valid transaction, perhaps, but we need to know more. Yes, item 5.8, a resolution denouncing the mayor's 2019 resolution of 
to commendation to Vietnamese actress Veronica No. Better late than never. Item 6.3 is to discuss council meeting adjournment time. For starters, how about not canceling five plus meetings per year? Staff failed to mention the city cited in the staff report all start their meetings at 6 p.m. or earlier. A simple majority three to five vote should be enough to extend the meeting. So let's start meetings at 6 p.m. and end by midnight unless a simple majority three to five vote to go longer. It said we even need, need a public official and employee interaction policy item 6.4. Thank you, council members Ho and Manzo for working on this, but let's add more bite to it. Replace all the should and should nots with shall and shall nots and require all public officials sign a statement agreeing to abide by this policy. Thank you, Councilman Doe, for item 6.5 to finally discuss changing the mayor's office to rotational from elected by way of a ballot measure, letting the voters decide. This would have been on the agenda months ago if the city attorney had not misinformed council members about the number of votes needed. This change is badly needed in Westminster to depoliticize the office of mayor and prevent any one person from getting too much power. We've only had two mayors in 21 years. That's crazy. This will give us five council districts instead of four, and more importantly, ensure constituents in each district will see their council member have the opportunity to serve as mayor for at least one year, resulting in more fair and balanced representation from the top down. Let's do this, Westminster. Item 6.6 .6 is an nepotism policy ordinance. An ordinance for this policy, but not for item 6.4. Our municipal code should incorporate by reference all council policies. Please add cousin to the ordinance and delete living in the same household because it doesn't matter where the relative lives. What who is a primary assistant of the city manager and will Weston C be forced to resign immediately from his two positions or Thank you, Councilman Manzo, for item 6.7 to discuss council policy for recognitions and proclamations. One day after the big debate at the last council meeting over the 2019 resolution of accommodation Ta gave to Veronica No, Ta attended a big party and presented a certificate of recognition with all council members listed on it to Vietnamese YouTuber Chen Quoc Hui when the mayor should have been at the League of City, California Cities Conference instead. I filed a complaint with the city attorney and interim city manager because the certificate was written in Vietnamese. Unfreaking believable. Council members knew nothing about it. Mayor Ta, exactly how did this person's YouTube subscriber number help the city of Westminster and all its residents? I guess council needs to add recognitions must be in English to the policy and remove the policy's miscellaneous section that allows the mayor to issue recognitions by himself on behalf of the city council as a whole or add language to require council approval first. And lastly, Van Tran and Lan Quoc Nguyen do not live in Westminster and should stop talking about our city and call off these ridiculous recalls, especially the one against Councilman Manzo, which reeks of racism, full stop. Okay. Our next speaker is Jessica Lasno. Good evening. Uh, I'll be brief. As a Westminster resident, I'd like to see the city work with item 6.3 to set a fixed meeting adjournment time for city council meetings. The last several meetings have continued on late into the night and even the early hours of the next day. And as a community member, I can log off and watch the meeting on YouTube the following day. But council members and staff don't have that luxury. They must stay on until the mayor adjourns the meeting. Uh, as you know, under the current system, the mayor is not gonna adjourn the meeting until almost all the agenda has been completed and that's not his fault. It's just the way the system we have. However, people don't really function their best when they're sleep deprived. And I've seen tempers flare more as the meetings drag on past midnight. Our city's in a financial situation where council members and staff need to be working at their peak performance. And I'm thinking that limiting meeting durations to some sort of a fixed time so they don't drag on past midnight would help our city leaders and staff be at their best during these limited meetings that we do get. So, it, and it also additionally makes some sense to me that we perhaps could save money on staffing by reducing the length of our meetings. We may have to have more meetings. Perhaps some of the meetings that have been canceled could merely be postponed or changed to another week so we can get through the many agenda items we have. But in conclusion, I'm gonna advocate for establishing an end time for all city council meetings 
to improve performance and to save money. Thank you very much. Okay, next speaker is Jody Boyd. Hi, good evening, everybody. I'm going to be very brief so we can keep things moving this evening, but I just want to echo my agreement with Jessica and the agenda item. We absolutely need to set a meeting end time of 12 midnight, and I agree it will uh, help make the city and our representatives more efficient. And I urge our city and our interim city manager to consider putting together a report card um, for the city and all of our uh, city council members. Um, we need to kind of, you know, set a report card here, like how are people doing? And in general, how are we doing on getting through these meetings um, and ending on time and without any outbursts um, and behavior issues from Charlie? Thank you. Okay, if anybody would else would like to speak, please raise your hand. New COVID now. Uh phát biểu thì xin giơ tay lên và quý vị có thể giơ tay lên bằng cách chạm vào cái biểu tượng của các bạn tay ở trên màn hình của quý vị. I have no additional speakers. Long way, so then I. Long oh, Sam keeps raising his hand. Hold on. Okay. There Sorry. Long fam. There are no additional speakers. All right, so I close oral communication. Next, we have a consent calendar or matter list under the consent calendar I consider routine and maybe approved by single motion, uh, followed by a roll call vote. There will be no separate discussion of this item unless member city council or staff request that specific items be removed from the consent calendar for separate action or discussion. Move to approve. <clears throat> I'd like to pull uh, item 3.5 for clarification, please. All right. Anyone make a motion yet or no? Yeah, I made a motion to approve. Okay, so council member may as well make a motion and vice mayor pull item 3.5. Motion to approve except item 3.5. Any item that council member want to pull? Okay, so may I have a second? So I second the motion. So uh, there's a motion a second for consent calendar, but item 3.5. Roll call vote. Council member Doe? Yes. Council member Ho? I just want to make sure the park sale is not stuck somewhere in here before I vote. Hot. Uh, yes. I agree. Council member yes. Okay. Council member Monzo? Yes. Vice Mayor Wynn? Yes. And Mayor Ta? Yes. That motion carried five to zero. All right, so then we have uh, item 3.5, special event permit application from Daniel Figaro to Howard. Saturday night, Munchie event on October 23rd, November. 20 December 18, 2021, and January 22nd, 20, uh, 2022 at City Hall parking lot. Okay. Um, Vice Mayor. Well, I just, uh, I just want to make sure that, uh, you know, I am, uh, you know, in all in favor of, uh, you know, um, citizens or uh, residents in Westminster is using uh, public for you know, uh, for events, for meaningful event, uh, I only want to clarify this one. As I look at the applicant uh, application uh, from the applicant, is um, is uh, 
in, in individual individual instead of um, um, uh, and organizations. And I have no problem with that if that's the you know if the city allow that to, to you know to any uh, individual can can apply for special permit on public uh, um, property to uh, um, set up a, an event. But in this case here, uh, it's called Saturday Night Munchies. And it's not only one night, it's in a series of three different events, actually four different events, right at the city, uh, park, uh, city hall parking lot. And it doesn't say whether this event is um, for a nonprofit or for you know, for individual um, profit uh, business, uh, you know, and if it is, it is just for individual and whoever can do it, they can use the public land to organize the event and make money out of that. Then, uh, you know, I need some clarification on this. Uh, uh, so uh, what the uh, Director uh, Diane Dober, can you, Diane Dober, can you uh, uh, set some light on this one, please? Certainly. So this is a, this is an individual. It's not a nonprofit, and um, people get to access public property. There's a process, and they're following through with a special event permit process. This particular person is um, has already established this in the city of Santa Ana, and he's looking to expand, uh, providing an opportunity for Westminster to partake. And everyone will be required to get a business license. Um, uh, the, all those regulations will be in place. So but I, I not, go ahead. Okay, I'm sorry. By saying that, I see the mailing address is in Santana. So this person here is not actually a resident in Westminster, correct? Correct. Okay, so he is an in individual and he's using Westminster public land, uh, property for his own advantage, not even for the nonprofit. Correct. It's an individual looking to provide an opportunity to is have vendors. Yes. Any, is there, so is there any sales associated with this or not? Yes. Okay. So what if, if the profit, who, who park, which pocket is going in uh, when, when the profit is made? You know, I don't know how, I believe uh, the applicant is in the waiting room. His name is Daniel Figueroa. I can't speak to how they're operating. But I'm I'm assuming that the vendors that pay to have a space to Mr. Figueroa, um, each vendor will be able to take whatever sales they make that they would keep them for themselves. And Mr. Figueroa may, if he's selling the the vendor spaces, uh, he would be generating the profit for himself in that respect. So what I'm hearing is you are leasing or, or rent renting or yeah, I, I don't know what you call. Um, but uh, for a, for a amount of fees uh, that he can use the public, uh, I mean, uh, city property to to uh, to sell to make an event himself. So, how much is the application cost there for a night? You know, I don't have those details. Um, can I ask the assistant city clerk? Do you see Daniel Figueroa in the waiting room? Diana, I have a quick question. Sorry to interrupt, Vice Mayor. Is this similar to the event that uh, that we were trying to put together? I don't even know what happened to the event over there at Little Saigon, that market, night market type of thing. Um, is this, sounds like this is kind of similar to what that was gonna be, uh, kind of boost the economy, of, uh, get uh, get people out to help small, small businesses to generate some, some uh, much needed uh, revenue, sales tax revenue, and just to give residents involved in, in, in something to do and community event. Council member Manzo, Council, Man Man uh, Council member Manzo, um, this is individual, not a business. 
yeah that's what i'm question i'm asking yeah yeah and and, and at the same time for the you know we're, uh, at the asian mall you know the client list is uh, you know actually in the city of westminster this is uh, for the person from the city of Santa Ana and using uh, City Hall as a public uh, property for his uh, event, which I don't call that, you know, is uh, it's a general event for, for the community, but it is an event for to make money himself. So I am more concerned of, you know, uh, having people from different cities, especially they are individually. I mentioned that individually, people from city of Garden Grove, Huntington Beach, uh, you know, different uh, neighboring cities, they come in and then they book uh, the city hall. Then, you know, we will not have any day for the city hall as, uh, you know, uh, uh, an open uh, parking lot. So I saw uh, Mr. Figueroa, but then he disappeared. Can I uh, ask, Diane, uh, can I ask you a question? Mm -hmm. uh, okay, so the application was filled out and consistent with a city policy to um, allow the public to use uh, city property, is that correct? Correct. Okay, so the, the, our city policy doesn't have any rules in regard uh, and in discriminating whether the applicant has to be the resident or not resident, is that correct? Correct. Okay, so is there anything in this application that contradict to our city policy in renting public spaces for uh, to the public? No. Okay, so there's no reason for us to deny this application. Uh, uh, you know, like uh, there's another resident wanting to rent a particular uh space and the same time same day is that correct there's no one in, in line no okay so there is no reason for us to deny this application you guys are the prover of this process okay. so however okay, but, you they, but this individual uh follow to the letter in, in, in complying with the uh, rule and procedure that we established in the city of westminster is that correct Absolutely, he has conditions that he has to meet in order to provide the event. Thank you very much. Can you can you can you name to uh, uh, some of the uh, condition, please? Um, they are attached to the staff report. Um, it went to every city department, um, in, as well as OCFA, and the conditions are noted in the back of the staff report. There's like four pages of conditions. Okay. So. Yeah. To, to read them out loud would be a bit challenging right now, but I okay, can- that's okay, that's okay. okay. Uh, I, I, like I said, you know, I, I want some clarification on that. So, you know, I got the answer from you. Uh, I can understand that, you know, one special, I mean, you know, one event I can, I can, I can understand, but here is four different events. So, you know, I, I, I don't know that we should uh, you know, approved for the four different events. I, you know, I, I'm okay with one event for October 23rd, and then we will consider after that. But approving four different events at the same time using uh, the, C, uh, the, the, the property of uh, right in front of City Hall and uh, the, 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 the applicant is not e reside in the City of Westminster. I, 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 I understand that, you know, the, the policy that we had before that we have to follow, but at this point here, I would move to approve, uh, if I would move to approve uh, for the one event on October 23rd. So can I just, so we did learn this evening that based on some conditions that were provided by OCFA that Mr. Figueroa has, um, needs time to get those completed. So I don't believe he intends to have the event on October 23rd. So if you're only approving one event, I would suggest uh, to accommodate Mr. Figueroa that the November 20th be considered. And I believe Mr. Figueroa is in the audience if you guys have any specific questions for him. Yes, I do, I do. Can I, can I ask yes. him to pick up? Yep. Abby's getting him. We'll yeah. unmute him from the attendee side. He doesn't need to be a panelist. Diana, yeah. Diana, can I ask you a question before he comes on? Sure. Um, 
uh, on this uh, agreement, if if council approves all the dates and uh, something, let's say hypothetically something happens in an event that staff's not happy with, I mean, council can has we had the privy to cancel the the rest of the dates, right? Absolutely. Okay. Have you uh, ever have in um, you know one person, uh, especially? one uh, individual apply four different event in, in you know, in one uh, special uh, event permit application. So we recently through the summer, we, um, the council approved a special event permit for a realtor to host three movie nights at Bolsa Chica Park. So we, as we, the council approved three movie nights on behalf of this realtor to bring a movie night to Bolsa Chica Park. So that's happened before. And Mr. Figaro is so, here. Yeah, yeah. Go ahead, come, on. come on. So on um, the whole, cause I do Friday night munchies every Friday in um, city of Santa Ana at the city hall. And it's an opportunity for the community to get come together, enjoy themselves, and also vendors to work because a lot of people lost their jobs through um, COVID. And this is this gives them a chance to make some income during the you know the time when we do the event. Um, I do go through the permits and everything, and the reason like why you charge and stuff like that because permits, license, everything costs money, and then. Um, the, especially when, it, um, especially with the uh, food vendors, it's going to cost me more money because I have to provide, I have to provide them a three sink apartment, which cost me about a thousand dollars to rent. So I could have only eight vendors per, per um three sink apartment. So it adds up. Like I'm not really making that much profit or anything. And, you know, it does take time to market and do stuff like that, and it gives the community, like Westminster community, to vent. You know. So I'm also going to um, Los Angeles, Los Angeles as well because I got invited over there. So I'm gonna check the area as well. So it's just helping the community and everybody to get back together and just start growing, building up the community and just the economy, whatever we can, you know, to help out. So it's not really because I'm a vendor myself. And then you know, it all started with few, few of me, like few of the vendors and myself just Benny on the street, the no permits and stuff like that, we got in trouble. So I was like, all right, cool. I'll, you know, file L um, LLC and, you know, build it up and stuff. And yeah, sorry if I'm going, but go ahead. If you have any questions, ask away. Okay. Um, I'm very surprised to see, you know, you, that you are asking for a permit for four, four different events uh, in, in one uh, special event permit application. That's the reason why I asked for clarification. Um, I understand the, the policy is there, uh, but then, you know, if I, if I were to uh, let you have one, or let's say two out of the four, which one do you want to have for the time being? Right. And we get for, for the next two, you know, uh, with a, another, another application. Yeah, because um, October is too short um, to get all the vendors and everything. November, it's kind of pushing it, and it's kind of close to Thanksgiving. So I can work something out with you and discuss times mm -hmm. and dates would work with you. Like, um, the reason I, I said four, because, you know, for that food vendors, they have to get the TFF, which would cost them $175. And they get up to 25 days to sell at the event. It gives them more opportunity to like use that permit, you know, give it a use and stuff like that, especially with the merch vendors. They got to get the business license and everything. So they also have to pay as well. So that's when I come in, kind of help out with, you know, with the permits and license or whatever I can. Um, but I'll work with you, whatever you like, you know. You know, I, 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 uh, 
appreciate that you consider that you know bringing in you know uh, for con- this, the people in the city of Westminster, but uh, at the same time, this is a city, uh, you know, a property, and you know having one person to to you know uh, to take over four different events in just the uh, what uh, uh, October to January, about four four or five months uh, time time frame. I think that, that this is a lot to. Uh, you know, I, I don't think it's right for the city of Westminster uh, residents. I think that uh, from the policy standpoint, we have to work on it. Uh, so I will, I'll be, we'll be working with, uh, with the council, uh, with the city staff to look into this uh, matter. But at this point here, you can't even decide which one that you are going to, uh, if, I, if, if, if I propose for the two, if we, if the council will approve for two, you don't know which one that you are going to, to have. Yeah, um, that's why I'm working with Pam and Diane. They're, they've been helping me out because every city is different. They have different policy and stuff like that. So I'm not rushing anything. That's why I'm like, which state would work with everybody? So I'm not just coming in and stepping on anyone's foot or be on anybody's bad terms. Um, and this is all about community and helping each other out. And it, like... Yeah, there's a couple of dates we could do, but it also has to fit in the community's schedule as well. Like if they have time to vend, or there's a lot of. Um, I, I can understand. Want, can, I yeah. can, can I say a few things? That seems, uh, sorry to interrupt, Vice Mayor and Daniel, um, but it seems Diana, this, everything seems to be in order uh, with the application and, and our policy and. Uh, he's doesn't matter. Uh, you don't have to be a Westminster resident to rent any facility in Westminster, be it the city hall parking lot or or the uh, the commerce chamber of commerce, the the West ABC, any any of them. We don't have to be a Westminster resident, right? So everything seems to be in order. Um, I think one thing that's lacking here in our city is somewhere for our residents to go. I hear time and time again, over and over again, that our most of our residents go to other cities for their dining and dining experience and entertainment. Uh, this, I think this is a great event for our residents to, to give us something to look forward to on the weekend ago. Um, from what I understand, the parking lot is not being used on the weekends the, from anybody. So I really don't see us having an issue with this with this applicant. Um, we can have adjustments on the dates if the dates don't work out, like as Diana stated that, um, and the, uh, Daniel that he has to work with uh, some of the requirements from OCFA. So there's time for them. It's not going to happen just overnight. There's time. There's things to get together. But I think this is actually a really good event for our city. And our residents, and also for these very small uh, business owners, these small vendors. And we talked about in the past that we need to support our businesses and and help them generate some much needed revenue due to COVID. And uh, from what I understand, some of these re- some of these vendors um, didn't make any money for you know almost a year. So I mean, this is something good for them. Um, I really don't see an issue with this. So Daniel, can, can yeah, I can have another yeah, question? Can you can I have another question for you? Um, I want to make a motion to. What is your? What is your? What is your? I have not. I'm not done with the. Motion okay, approved. Second. Yeah, but, second. I think. The, I think the vice mayor. You know, he he just have another question. Let him finish, please. So uh, Daniel, um, what is your business name? My business name is. Under Friday night munchies. Okay, so you said Saturday night munchies. No, Friday night munchies. Okay, it's here in the application. It says Saturday night munchies. Okay, so uh, I I don't know is uh, is conflict with what you said just said, but uh, let's say that you you are individual and you let's say you gain profit on that day that night. For, for which particular night at 
those money, the money is going to your pocket. It's not going to any uh, profit organization or charity event. Sure, I wish I could make five thousand dollars on Friday nights. Um, I on Friday nights I have over. I, no, I guess just 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 a you know yeah. a number. So yeah, because I, I I'll like the most I'll take home. Like I said, um, the three sink apartments rental they cost money. You know, marketing, getting videographers and stuff like that. It, it adds Thank you. Up. Uh, you don't have to tell me all that. Uh, what, okay. what, what, I'm sure, what I'm just saying uh, to the Wait, question, uh, just one, uh, one more. Can I call the question? I like to call the question. Uh, we need to one, stop and vote. No, no, no. Hold on a second. So, Vice Mayor, are you done? Or do you have no, else? not yet. I'm, I'm just going to conclude. Yeah. I said that, you know, uh, you council, hurry, please. council members. You know, I think that, you know, I know that the policy is there established before my, my our times, but I think that we have to consider for the, you know, for the city of Westminster here. Somewhere, if let's say that, you know, tomorrow we have another application came in from, from Garden Grove, from, from Huntington Beach, from, you have to protect the city of Westminster. You have to protect the people in the city of Westminster. You know, so, so you know, you can't give it to anyone you know, let's say that people from the, uh, from uh, from the north, Sacramento, they come here and they want want to do it. Then you know, five times, you said that policy is allow you to do so. I think it's you know we we should consider that. So right now, my motion is, if you have a motion already, then I I, I want to, I want to know what that motion is. Most approved. No, I want to know what motion already. is. What's that motion? No, 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 no. Hold on a second, uh, our council member. I mean, like, based on my understanding, council member Doe, he make a motion as recommended by staff and council member. Uh, actually, Ojo, I, made, I, I second made that motion, motion, right? No, okay. I made the motion. Okay, so council member Menzo, he make a motion as recommended by staff and council member Doe, second that motion. So, yes. uh, Right. Okay. So, so with if that, vice uh, mayor, if you want to come up with anything, yes. you need to have like. I want to make a substitute motion. Yeah, there we go. Okay. Uh, my substitute motion is that I will, you know, with the uh, un with the understanding that he has to have the time to to work on it, he can select our two out of four, uh, and and right now we 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 can only look to two of the event, approve two of the event, and then you know we will consider. Uh, the next application uh, at a later time. That so may I ask Mr. Uh, uh, Figaro, so are you okay with uh, two events instead of four? Yeah, I'm fine with that. Um, like I said, I'm not sure how it's gonna work out and stuff like that. Like it, right now it's a process, so I don't mind doing two and see how it goes okay, from So there. basically the, the vice mayor allow you to pick any date, but as long as only two instead of four. So are you okay with that? Yes, I'm okay with that. And then, like, like I said, I'm working with Diane, so we'll get everything settled. So right now, it's in the process on getting it going. I see. Yeah. So it could be in January or you know the following month. I'm just gonna continue working with Pam and Diane, and they're just we yeah they're just helping me out and working together. Okay. You know, so we we should stop interrogate uh, Mr. Figueroa. Uh, this is embarrassing, okay? We, we have anything, we let him deal with the director of uh, Park and Rec. Uh, we should not embarrass uh, him by grilling him right here at the council meeting where they, we have a check and balances. We, he already went through the process. He did everything right. And, uh, you know, we shouldn't, be, we, should, we shouldn't embarrass him like this in, in front of everybody. Uh, if you want questions. to prove, you want to disprove, okay, you, you, you know, we have the right to do that. But, uh, you know, you, you, know you, you, want, you want to, you can change the policy and give it to, uh, to um, uh, the, the director of Park and Rec. And have them, uh, whatever, have it is, like whatever it is, I call for the question, please. Yeah. So right now, we, we need a second. We need a second on the substitute motion. All right, so uh, I mean, I don't have a problem with this uh, this applicant. So I think that you know uh, he he went through the process, and I don't have a problem. Yes. 
so do we have a second for a substitute? Or is he going to die? Okay. Substitute dies for lack of a second. Okay. Okay. You're voting well, on the motion. Original, uh, original motion. Okay, so that motion was made by Councilmember Monzo and a second by Councilmember Doe. And that was to approve the special event permit for the Saturday night munchies event at City Hall parking lot, subject to the condition. Roll call vote, Council Member Doe. Uh, before I vote, I just want to uh, thank Mr. Daniel Figueroa for you know for going through the process and do everything right and submit the application. I approve that. Thank you. Yes. Council Member Ho. I approve. Yes. Council Member Monza. Uh, I just want to say uh, thank you, Daniel. Um, good luck in your event, and hopefully that um, it works out for all the small business owners and, and for our community. Uh, so, yes. Vice Mayor Wynn. Well, I, uh, I, want, I want to let uh, Daniel, uh, Mr. Daniel, uh, figure, know that, you know, I am, I you know, I, I, I am living in the city of Westminster. I am a Westminster. So I, you know, that, that was the question I wanted to clarify before I, I, I vote. So at this point here, for four events, I said no. And Mayor Tom? Yes. Okay, that motion carried for one. That Fair. was Fair. Mayor Nguyen voting no. Okay. Fair. I just want to quickly jump in because we had two council members at different points bring the uh, call the question motion. Uh, if that motion is made uh, and it's seconded, we need to take that motion immediately. It takes priority. So just in the future, if that, that motion is made, we should see if there's a second to it. And if there is, then we should end debate right. at that point. I just want to make sure everybody understands how that works. Okay. Thank you for reminding. Yeah. Thank you, Rick. I appreciate that. So Next, we have public hearings. Okay, so due to COVID-19 restrictions, changes have been made to the public hearing process in order to ensure members of the public may participate remotely. So members of the public who wish to address the city council were able to in writing up to 24 hours prior to the meeting. In lieu of written comments, members of the public who wish to speak tonight may raise their hands or have the opportunity to send a request in advance, in advance with which I did not receive any. With that said, speakers will, We'll have a total of we'll have a total of five minutes to address the city council. All right, so I'd like to open a public meeting ordinance to allow the increase of the maximum driveway width by five feet to facilitate up street parking on properties developed by an ADU and or a junior ADU. I think we need to have a staff report first. Thank you, Mayor and Council. Uh, Stephen Ratkay, our planning manager, and Fernanda Arias, our planning technician, are here to make the presentation tonight. Sorry, good evening, uh, Mayor and members of the Council. My name is Fernanda. Um, we, um, this Suntex Amendment was actually initiated by the Mayor and Council. Um, the zone tax amendment is to allow properties with ADUs and or junior ADUs to extend their driveways by five feet. Um, this was initiated on July 14th, 2021. Um, and then on September 15th of 2021, the zone tax amendment was presented to Planning Commission. Um, they voted unanimously to recommend that the mayor and council adopt the ordinance. And um, that's the ordinance that we have for you, before you tonight um, is to extend the driveway by five feet for properties developed with ADUs and junior ADUs. Mr. Mayor. All right, yeah. please, please. Mr. Mayor. Okay, Vice Mayor. This, this um, item also involved with the uh, ADU or uh, junior ADU. I want to recuse myself. All right, thank you so much for uh, Letting us know, all right. So uh, I want to thank you. Uh, Can I, um, the city clerk or city manager, um, let me know when it's done so I can come back. Okay. Text me. All right. All right, so uh, thank you staff for your 
explanation any any question or any or any comment from uh, member of the council before I open for public comments no comments all right so with that I'd like to close uh, public comments move to approve we need to open I thought we are we already opened public oh I, oh I already opened the public comment do we have any yes please okay okay so first speaker is Twee Vo. Hello. Yes. Yeah. Um, I would like to ask um, about the, in the agenda, about the uh, city in the past was um, selling the property um, without hearing, number one. Second, um, when there's, after the hearing, it should be on auction. Why is it uh, blindly sold? Um, with, I'm, I'm uh, sorry, I'm, 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 I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to interrupt you right there. Um, we are actually on a public hearing item. If you wanted to speak on any, ag and any agenda item that's not this particular item about the, uh, the, um, the driveway, that time has since passed. So you're oh, not, okay. yeah, you're not able, unfortunately, you're not able to um, make your comments. Oh, okay. For the ADU, um, uh, I, I think it's good to have five feet. So I don't have anything to say about that. Okay. Thank you. Okay, our next speaker is Terry Rains. Well, good evening. I have already talked about this proposed zone text amendment here before the council and at the planning commission hearing last month. Before you tonight is a proposed ordinance to amend Title 17 of the Westminster Municipal Code to allow properties developed with an ADU or, or, and or an JADU to expand the width of their driveways by five feet. There's some interference. Somebody needs to be muted. Thank you. In my opinion, this amendment is futile. Many homeowners in our city have already paved their entire front yard with concrete or left only 10 to 20% of their yards landscaped in direct violation of our existing code. Slowly but surely, our neighborhoods are transforming into massive parking lots, eliminating the beauty and character of our city. While some of those homes might have an ADU on site, most do not. If more residents park their cars on their properties, it does alleviate some of the street parking challenges, but at what price? And as a city, are we willing to pay that price? A lot of homeowners rent out rooms in their homes out of financial necessity instead of constructing an ADU. Since that also provides badly needed affordable housing, why shouldn't they also be allowed to widen their driveways? So where do you draw the line? On a related note, can someone please explain why Westminster only requires 15% of a site with new development, quote unquote, to be landscaped, 15%. No neighboring cities have minimums anywhere near that low. More importantly, does a quote, site with new development, end quote, include a site with a new ADU? That would be conflicting. Our Parking specific hardscape limit municipal code 17.300.020 D2 is convoluted. It is far too generous due to complicated tier allowances based on lot sizes, which other cities do not have. We should stick with a fixed percentage regardless of lot size or ADU development. It's time to go back to the drawing board on this, not just in relation to ADUs, but overall. Thank you. And thank you that Charlie is gone for this. That was so embarrassing. I just have to say it. And I'm sorry if Mr. Ferguero, if you're still here. Thank you very much. Next speaker is Amy Walsh. Uh, hi, I wanted uh, to just throw a couple of my sense in there on this one. Um, I, I agree with what Terry was saying. Um, she said a lot of what I was going to say, um, but I would also like to know if, you know, we, 
we have so many, so many residents here that have already went ahead and modified their driveways <laughs> without, you know, getting the proper permits and all of that fun stuff. Uh, I definitely agree with Terry as we should probably get back on to uh, the drawing board with this one and not just make it about places that have ADUs. Um, and I will say that, uh, you know, I don't know if this is um, true what I've heard, uh, but I heard that uh, Charlie, in fact, was one person that had expanded his driveway. So I'm glad that he's actually recused himself from this, uh, this vote. But I would, it, I would ask that the uh, council go back and kind of modify this a bit and then come back to it, uh, whereas it's not just properties with ADUs. That's all, thanks. I have no additional speakers. All right, if we don't have any other speakers, so then I close public comments. I have a question for city staff. Please. Okay, I remember in the last, uh, the last meeting when we discussed about this uh, item, um, we current, currently we have a city ordinance specifically uh, um, regulate how how many percentage uh, of that frontal piece of property had to be landscaped. Is that correct? Am I correct? Uh, that is correct. Yes, sir. Okay. So um, so those uh, you know to the response to the public comments. Uh, so those uh, resident who. Uh, already um, expand the driveway or um, concrete their uh, lawn to create uh, additional parking spaces uh, without permit or approve from the city. Uh, it doesn't make it legal. Is that correct? Yes, that that is correct. Um, folks that choose to violate those regulations. We have the uh, ability to, when we know about them, to send out code enforcement okay. and cite them, absolutely. Okay, so uh, by approving this uh, uh, ordinance, we basically, we allow um, residents who have a legally built uh, uh, ADU or uh, junior ADU to be able to expand the driveway to accommodate uh, at least one more vehicle in the driveway. Uh, yes. Is that correct, right? Okay, so doing that has nothing to do with uh, uh, illegally expand the driveway or uh, concrete landscaping. Is that no, a fair statement? He, that's correct. It has no impact on our ability to enforce those other provisions in the municipal code. Thank you. Can I uh, make a motion to approve? I have a question. Before. I have a question. Um, Please, Councilman Menzo. Yes. Thank you, Mayor. Um, Steve, do we have a, do, are you required to have a, to pull a permit for a, what's described as concrete flat work, sidewalk, small sidewalk, um, driveway? Yes, the, the code does require that you have a, a an actual driveway um, you know, and it's understood that it needs to be some type of uh, uh, impermeable surface like uh, concrete. And some people do choose to have um, decorative materials such as bricks or um, pavers, uh, but most certainly the common one would be just uh, regular um, broom finished concrete. So it is, it does require a permit. Yes, yes and also the public works department requires a concrete curb where the property line meets the right of way. So there has to be that process of moving the car off the street onto you know a permanent surface. Okay, and then that the, I think we spoke about this before, but I refresh my memory. Um, so when the driveway, if it is widened for an extra five feet, um, do they do they have the ability to also? Uh, widen the, the approach? Yes, Councilman Manzo, absolutely. We have chance of standards to accommodate that, um, that request. We have allowed them to extend five more feet if they have the ADU or JADU. It does, it does, it, it would widen the approach as well. 
Correct. They will require to per, um, to obtain the encroachment permit from the city. Okay, and that's a separate permit from the driveway. Yes, sir. Um, all right. I just seem to I think I spoke about this before. It's just um, it just seems to be a lot of residents in Westminster that are just already in violation of our ordinance as far as landscape, you know, minimums. It's just, a, I guess it's a code enforcement issue that seems to be lacking. Anyways, thank you. All right, any other council member? If not, I uh, second a motion. Okay, we have a motion and second on the floor. The motion was made by council member Doe and a second from Mayor Ta. And that was to introduce an ordinance for first reading entitled an ordinance of the mayor and city council of the city of Westminster, amending title 17 land use of the Westminster municipal code to allow properties developed with an accessory dwelling unit and or junior accessory dwelling unit to expand the width of their driveways by five feet. Read by title only and wait for the reading. Council member Doe? Yes. Council member Ho? Yes. Council member Monzo? Yes. Mayor Ta? Yes. That motion carried 401 with Vice Mayor Nguyen being recused. All right. So can you ask um, the Vice Mayor coming back? I just, I just sent him a message. Okay. So next we have regular business. Item 5.1, County of Orange, Care Act funding for outdoor dining support. So uh, stop it, Paul, please. Thank you, Mayor and Council. This item is to update the City Council on the grant program for outdoor dining support. This is funded through the first supervisor supervisorial district. Uh, the city received $300,000 in order to support outdoor dining. The program that's described here has a couple different pieces to it. And the first is to offer some immediate grant support to restaurants in Westminster, up to $5,000 to either create, um, refresh, or expand an outdoor dining patio for, for their operations. Um, and then kind of in anticipation of, of looking down the line and hopefully into recovery and um, you know, no longer being in a pandemic situation, trying to figure out whether or not there are opportunities to um, allow some of these COVID patios, if you will, to become permanent. Um, we live in a great weather situation here and outdoor dining is, is delightful. And we had the opportunity to speak to several of these businesses that are currently operating these COVID patios and hear a little bit about how it has improved their um, their ability to market themselves. People notice them more. Their, um, people are interested in dining outside. So it's been very helpful to a number of our businesses. And we're trying to figure out you know, how we can continue to sustain those if possible. So we've been working um, between community development and public works very closely, trying to come up with uh, an opportunity to examine um, how we might be able to facilitate these on a long-term basis. So right now we've engaged a traffic consultant to assist us with um, an initial review of some of these parking lots. In most cases, these COVID patios are taking over parking spaces within an existing lot. So we're trying to get an understanding of, you know, what, what which one of these parking lots might be able to accommodate losing some of those spaces. So we're looking to get a little bit of assistance with that on a, on a technical scale. And then also internally working on how we can make this process simple, um, make sure that these patios, if they are able to stay, that they're safe and that they're attractive and how we can you know, kind of put together that program so that it's super user-friendly for our restaurants. The idea being that um, everyone benefits from this, from, from the restaurants to the patrons, uh, to attracting more patrons. So um, the, this item tonight is really just to provide that update because we've taken on a little bit more of, of a long-term view on these patios with this program. We did contact the county to extend this program for us. So the initial termination of, of this grant funding was the end of this year and they've offered us through the end of June of next year. So we have a little more time to try to figure some of this out. And we're, we're hoping that the, the council will approve this and allow us to use the funds for these purposes. If you have any questions, I am here as well as as well as the Dolfo to answer some of the more technical pieces on the parking, if that's of interest. All right, thank you so much for your presentation. Any comment or concerns from uh, council member? Uh, I have a question. Th thanks. Thank you, Please. Mayor. Um, Alexa, uh, I think can you refresh my memory? Um, 
this this initial this three hundred thousand was this supposed to be part of the that um, county money that was supposed to be for event uh, night market type thing? No, this is a separate um, fund. So the the initial conversation that was had with the county regarding um, what you're recalling, they they took a different turn and decided to enter into a contract with a. a a private company or a private individual, I can't quite remember which for, for that funding specifically for Little Saigon. So this is a, a secondary piece that, that came from council or uh, Supervisor Doe's office specifically for kind of outdoor dining around the, around the city. So I think I remember it being a similar use as the Little Saigon money, but for the West side, is that, is that this, this money? The, yes, um, it, you know what, if I, that, that was my, I'm sorry to interrupt, but um, that was my little discussion today with um, our city, the our interim city manager. I don't know where the misunderstanding uh, came from, but initially I did, I was the one who asked um, uh, for us to contact um Supervisor Doe's office to, uh, because I heard again that there might be some more money for us. And I said um, specifically that money was to be for the, uh, the West side, because you know we already received money, $500,000 for the East side. Do you remember that? And then I don't know uh, when, I, when I asked for it, not long ago, maybe about a month ago or so, and then I was told that um, our former uh, CM Marwan Youssef um, already received the money and I never got any, I don't think any of our council members got uh, received any notice that that money was received. So I thought, okay, if I asked for it in our, city council at our city council meeting that I would get an answer at the same place. But um, I believe it was sent uh, to us in, in an email uh, with a subject line of something like um, subject of interest or something like that, which I, I, I disagreed how that was handled. And then now it's like, I, I, I stated clearly that early this afternoon that I made an announcement. I made, uh, um, uh, an, well, basically it was an announcement that this money was and should be used for the the uh, the east side or the west side. And um, the, actually I was uh, contacted by uh, council, um, I'm sorry, Supervisor Doe's office because I had asked for money for, you know, the West Side, uh, back when, I would say back uh, three or four months back, and he, at the time he didn't have, or the supervisor's office didn't have any more funds to give us. And so, I mean, that was how it came all came about. So you're right, um, Councilman um, Manzo, that it was opposed and it was intended for the West Side, as for the, for the, for the West Side, that's right. So I don't know what happened. Um, Alexa, you can come back and explain. My conversations with uh, the city manager were to, was to figure out how to get this money out on the street. So this is, this is the program we've come up with. Unfortunately, we, we aren't event planners here. So um, you know, if you wanna provide some more direction, we can see what we can do. But yes, we were we were trying to move this money in accordance with the contract that we were provided by the county. And I think I think for, uh, I think I'm fine with that explanation simply because um, when I read on uh, you know the um, uh, staff report indicating, as you stated earlier, that um, staff is currently working on the second initiative to offer a way that property owners and businesses may be able to convert temporary or outdoor dining areas into permanent outdoor dining areas. So I'm very happy to hear that because that's really gonna help them. So even though it, it wasn't the way I intended us to use the money, I'm still okay moving forward. It's just that I, I think it just, you know, um, we gotta fix that miscommunication, you know, moving forward so that 
uh, we don't delay. I think this money might have come to us back in July, right? Correct? It was in August. So it's like two two months later we, we bring this up. So is that correct? I think the money did come in in July. I would have to ask the finance department yeah. to verify so that. How, but I did provide. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you see how that was grossly delayed in our com your communication to us. It's not your uh, your fault, but I believe it was uh, the former city manager's fault for for you know maybe he wasn't familiar with the process um, of um, informing us of communicating to us. So this is like three months later, you know? I mean, this Outdoor Dining uh, Support Cares Act funding, could we, we needed yesterday. We needed two months ago, three months ago, as soon as, as soon as ASAP, you know? As soon as the money uh, was uh, approved by, uh, by, um, by the county. So now we haven't even put it through the system and uh, in order for us to receive that money from county, we would have to do what you did tonight, right? Bring it up for, for approval by the council. The council has already approved the contract. So that, that piece is done um, okay. in, in terms of the agreement with the county. So the money is just not in the bank yet? Or is it in the bank? It needs to be moved into the right account. And the, so there is that, that formal step that okay. is being approved this evening to, to allow right. funds to be expended. I, have, I okay. want a quick comment. Um, um, you know how we, well, I appreciate uh, Council Member Ho, your, your hard work to get us this, this money's both the, the 500,000 for the Little Saigon, the night market. And I hope that comes, comes about fairly fairly quickly and also this 300,000 as well. But I think since we kind of, you know, kind of talked about that this was gonna be for the West side and the East side got the 500,000. If we wanna use this money for, to help businesses uh, kind of create a permanent structure, I'm, that sounds great, but it kind of seems that we should kind of still stick to that initial initial conversation of being it for the west side is there a way that we can make this money still be for the west side if i could just clarify very quickly the 500,000 the original 500,000 did not come to the city that is not in our possession is it going to no oh. the county made a decision to make it to enter into a contract with another entity with a private entity for that funding but no, that, that, that I disagree with that. I disagree with that because it's the private entity that uh, the county entered into contract with um, is from the, the, you know, the east side. That's true. So, and, and it's all because of map, it's for the matter of convenience, because uh, I believe we were going, we were working through some some uh, legal matters. And, 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 and I remember that you were involved, Alexa, and that it would have been uh, probably because it was going to be, the proposal was going to be, um, you know, right on the, uh, the private property of that particular private party. And that's why they decided just to go ahead and deal directly with that, with that uh, property owner. So, um, so that would have been for the West side. We all know that that's, I mean, that's for the East side. Um, do you see what I'm saying? So you remember technically that? It's still, technically it's still, yeah. Outside. Yeah. It's now we're, I remember now that there's going to be a lot of work for us to kind of make that happen and the county was going to work. It was just a workaround. Yeah, and exactly. so, but it's for the same thing. So yeah. uh, back to the uh, I think a quick clarification. Uh, could somebody explain to me which park of the city is the west side? <laughs> I, I didn't okay, hear I'm, I, I'm sorry. So, they, so, which part of the city is the west side? He's saying. Uh, well, so, basically, well, yeah. Little Saigon is the east side. So, we're getting our, we want to make sure we clarify that. Is that correct? Is there, I don't know, if, what's the. What so, is, that particular, the $500,000 was for the Little Saigon business area. And so this three hundred thousand dollars that that um, Councilmember Manzo remembered us talking about was supposed to be for the other side. 
So that would be the west side. Uh, okay, can we clarify, begin from where to where is the west side? That would help, so please. You, so I guess we would go like Beach Boulevard that runs north, south. So the east will be the little Saigon business area and the west side will be the other side, would, would, would be like the, uh, um, where um, in and out burgers and you know just all on that that side of beach is that correct yeah west of beach, west of beach. East of beach. yeah is so it running beach boulevard so beach again, boulevard is traditionally where we put the city if, if you're looking yeah. if you're looking to cut it in half yes so again the question should i think it's kind of kind of the ethical thing to do is to if we can somehow direct this money to, to the west side, is that possible, Alexa? You know, uh, I, um, here's the thing is I'm, I, I side with um, Council Member Manzo simply because it's, it would be a disappointment to the people of the west side simply because they, they did uh, some still remember that conversation we had, um, you know, in, in our uh, city council meeting, and some of them had made some comments. So I know they're looking forward to that money come to, coming to the west side. So if there's anything we could do, you know, to make it quote unquote fair, and also the other thing is to stick to our word. Um, and then I, I wouldn't mind kind of, you know, do the mix of east west, you know, whoever needs, uh, but maybe giving priority sort of to the, the, the people of the West Side. And it's just simply because it is a really good use of, of our money, of this um, uh, CARES Act um, funding, um, the CARES Act fund, because it, it's, it's creating this permanent outdoor dining area, which is really gonna help stimulate the economy. Um, and again, you know, knowing that this is like, we're, we're taking consensus directly from the business community, um, they're telling us that after having done the, um, you know, the temporary outdoor dining areas and, you know, how that was so well received. So I know it's going to be a success if we were to turn that into permanent outdoor dining. Um, so, you know, like I said, I wouldn't mind doing a mixture, but maybe giving priority to the West side. That would, to me, that would be fair, more fair. So, so, okay, uh, and how much money, I'm sorry, how much money uh, can each business, outdoor business, uh, receive from qualify for the uh, grant? So for the first part of it, sort of the mini grant piece is up to $5,000 in order to implement an outdoor patio or, it, you know, I mean, a lot of these have been around over a year now, they need to be refreshed on their furniture, that type of thing is up to $5,000. And as noted in the staff report, we did open that up to the public um, in, in August. The response has not been huge. Um, I think we've, we've had inquiries from, you know, probably 15 of the businesses. I think only seven at this point um, have, have contacted us and, and tried to work through an application process. So we do have a decent amount of funds to try to move forward with these permanent situations. Again, there's some analysis and work that needs to go into that. Um, you know, honestly, by default, just, just because of the parking situation in Little Saigon, and I think, you know, we've all been there, we, we know that the parking can be very, very challenging in that particular business district. So it is most likely that these patios that can be implemented permanently will not be in the Little Saigon district. Again, we need to get the technical analysis and, and we need to have those conversations and be looking at the data. But just again, by the nature of the parking situation in Little Saigon, it is most likely that permanent patios will be in other their locations. If you wanted to direct them, you know, to only be in a, you know, west of beach situation, that, that's absolutely possible. But right now we're, we're still in an information gathering stage. So if you would like, we can bring back um, kind of a, a midterm report on where we are in the technical analysis for what might be possible. Yeah, I think I would like that just to, you know, to bring back some midterm report. And again, uh, one thing that I was sold on is the fact that sometimes we open you know, and or dedicate funds to 
a certain side, whether it be east or west, and we've done this before, and that money, that fund just kind of sits, and that no one is interested in um, applying for such fund, and it just kind of sits, it doesn't serve anybody, um, you know, when it just sits there. So I think we also have to, uh, you, you know, figure out what needs to be done um, in a case where it sits and, and no one's interested, uh, and it could be one or two things that's happening when when money goes, uh, or like when we have no applicants. Uh, number one, it could be that the program is um, not well um, advertised. So, I mean, one thing we could do is um, maybe you go, you, I would recommend to go back to the temporary permits, you know, because if they're doing temporary permits and they're they're getting permitting for 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 the temporary use outdoor dining. They're certainly not going to um, bother with a, a permanent. You see what I'm saying? So I mean, and, and we did, we have a, contacted all of our restaurants that have these temporary use permits to let them know that you know there's some funding available. So we, we have been doing outreach and, and trying to gather interest and in the mini grant portion. Yeah. So, so I'm, I'm okay with not putting any restriction on it, uh, but then again, you know, I'd be happy or I'd love to hear that midterm report from you. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, Alexa, quick question. Uh, you mentioned that you do the uh, outreach to all those businesses. How do we do that? By in person, smoke signal, flyers? <laughs> Definitely smoke signal. Now we, um, for, we did do kind of an e-blast to all the, all the um, the business licenses that we have that are associated with restaurants. And then as well as the business license, sorry, the businesses that have temporary use permits in existence now. And we did that by phone and by email. Okay, so the variety of uh, channel. Yeah. Right. Thank you. And it's been on our social media and all that good stuff. You know, I, I'm not sure if, uh, if, um, if the uh, restaurant owner would mistake it, but I would approach a couple of uh, uh, business owner who say that they couldn't, they could not qualify for it for some reason, but I have to clarify that. So um, just, just FYI. And okay. Yeah. To, and send, send them our way. Mm -hmm. uh, Alexis, so right now we can just give you approval to authorize the budget increase, but come back with us with the, and all the technical studies are done for parking. Sure. And, mm -hmm. All right. A motion to approve the budget increase with the have a come back with the report on technical studies and how to direct the further direction. Second. second. All right, we have a motion and a second to approve as recommended by staff for item five. And that motion was made by Council Member Monza and seconded by Council Member Doe. So, Council Member Doe? Yes. Council Member Ho? Yes. Council Member Monzo? Yes. Vice Mayor Wynn? Yes. And Mayor Ta? Yes. That motion carried five to zero. Thank you. Next item 5.2 auto, authorization for one full time and two part time position within the water division. So uh, I think the council expects to have a staff report. Good evening, Mayor, Vice Mayor, and a member of the Council. Um, just going to have a quick uh, presentation with the news and ongoing challenges, um, such as the new approval of ADUs, um, another possible for another drought this year, and um, water conservation effort, and new uh, State Bill 8, 9, and 10. The Water Division is requesting the additional staff to provide the needed assistance in order to meet these demands and continue providing clean, safe, and reliable water system. So staff is requesting a budget increase in water fund for one full-time water tech and two part-time maintenance helper positions. Um, this request will not impact the city general funds nor the uh, affecting the current water rate. So that concludes my report. And tonight we also have the um, uh, Scott Mueller's, our water superintendent, is available to answer any question you might have. Thank you. Um, I have a quick question. How, how does, how how does this not affect our general funds? 
This is from the water fund. Okay. All right, that's cool. I like to hear that. Um, uh, excuse me, um, Jake. Yes, sir. Um, how much, I mean, what, what is the, our current staffing for the water division? And I mean, do we have full, how many full-time, part-time on there now? What do, what do we have? Scott, do you have a number or I can look at a number right now? We currently have one part-time position and 22 full-time positions. 22? Correct. Oh, that's a lot. Yeah, do you think, and I just was wondering if it's warranted to the addition of these additions. Um, like what is, what is, what is I, I see in the staff report, you're, you're stating the ADUs and uh, challenges meeting the, you know, maybe because of the, the water drought, possible drought. Um, and staffing levels, I mean, are we, are we understaffed? It sounds like we're, uh, we're, um, 22 seems to be a lot. Yes. Um, can, can you explain? Sure. Scott, go, um, go ahead. But you know, with water division, they have four different divisions uh, within the water divisions itself. We have construction, productions, water conservation, and metering. So each one, they have a certain number of staff. So with these demands coming up, um, they do need additional person, also part time to help you know, the varieties duties with these, um, within those four divisions. Okay. And um, what is it? So um, on your full-time position, you're requesting, what's the annual salary for that, the one full-time? The, the fully rated with benefits and everything is about 104,000 and the part-time is running about 29,000 per position. Okay, thanks. Uh, good question for you, um, Jake. Uh, when did you realize that you need uh, additional help? Oh, uh, we actually need help you know, when it started with the ADUs. Um, I think we figured out how we can manage our staff to take care of that. But I think it's been a such demand on the ADUs from the communities and the residents. And now with the state bill eight, nine and 10, we're anticipating it's a lot of requests putting additional water meter services. And also we have to enforce the, the water conservation when the drought's coming. Okay, so uh, the uh, ADU requires uh, additional meter installation as well as uh, the enforcement part of it. Is that, is that uh, what I'm hearing? Correct. And then okay. like I said, we, we do need that. And then it's also available, you know, just make it us available to respond to any other like main breaks or any emergencies as well. But you will remind the council, when did we have the ADU uh, adopted by uh, California? The ADU? Yeah, the <laughs> ADU program. When did we have it? Like we were- 18? July, 2017. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank, thank you very much. Jake, sorry, I have another question. Um, you know, I, I, I've driven by um, some ADUs and I, I seem to notice that uh, some, or at least the ones I've seen, they don't have a, a second uh, electrical meter for the back unit. And, but so they have, they have, they will apply for a second water meter, but not a, not a electrical meter. How does that, how does that work? Um, that they have for the electrical meter, they have to go through Edison's. I'm not so sure what the requirements as far as property but when they do, when they have a separate ADUs in the back, they do need a separate meet water meters. So, so, they, so they've required a separate water meter, but not a separate electric meter? They will come in and ask for a separate, uh, the second water meters. But if, they, if they're deemed to need a second uh, electrical panel, they have to go through Edison for that. No, I get that. Um, my, I guess my question is, um, how many water meters have, have, are being requested if they're not, the water meter is a little bit harder to do than the electrical meter. So how many water meters are being applied for? It's a lot easier, I guarantee you, it's a lot easier to install a second electrical meter than it is a water meter. Right. Um, we deal with the water meter installations. I think the electrical meter, probably they have to go through the building divisions. No. 
Yeah, and my question is how many water meters are being applied for that you need? No. You said you, you, have... you, you need more because of ADUs. How many, how many water meters are being applied for and installed? I think uh, mm -hmm. go ahead. Sir. Last time I got that number, we had 43 units in the queue. In the queue? Yeah. Okay. Um, and and we continue to get applications weekly. So it's it's pretty big right now. Okay. Got it. It just seems kind of weird to me that residents will go through the trouble to install a water meter when it's a lot harder than mm -hmm. it is to install electrical meter. All right. Thank you. One of the things that we find, one of the reasons for that is because uh, the, if, if you're running one water meter for the main uh, house and then uh, carrying that water on through to the ADU, uh, the landlord himself doesn't have a lot of control over how much water the back person uses, uh, yet he's stuck paying the bill. And in reverse to that, if uh, the property owner doesn't pay the bill, then the ADU is out of water. So this puts the responsibility on each one of the units to make sure that their bill is paid and they're responsible for how much water they use. So there's a huge benefit to it. We, we, we've had that problem in the past where uh, people build a fourplex behind their, their uh, residence uh, because they have the land to do so. And, uh, you know, either the front of their back isn't responsible for their water and it creates problems and they come back to us and ask us to add it later. So um, they've kind of gotten savvy with it's smarter to do it up front. No, I agree. I, I think that if you're doing an ADU, you should have your own separate water meter, your own separate gas meter, your own separate electric meter. So right. I'm just, just curious of why some residents choose not to, not to do it right. Anyways, thank you. Can we uh, move to approve? I second it. So that was a motion made by council member Doe and a second by Vice Mayor Nguyen. That was to authorize the creation and filling of one full-time water tech, one, two, and two part-time maintenance helper positions to meet the needs of the water division and the community and authorize a budget increase in the amount of 81,000 in water fund, 681,000 in water conservation fund 601 for a total of 162,000. Council member Doe? Yes. Council member Ho? Yes. Council member Monzo? Yes. Vice Mayor Wynn? Yes. And Mayor Ta? Yes, I accidentally... Uh... Uh, I got a key inside my office, so I, uh, I'm going to ask staff to open my door. So I'm really sorry for it. Yeah. Mayor, we, I'm dispatching the staff right now to, to get the door open. Sorry about that. And that motion carried five to zero. So uh, since the mayor isn't, uh, I don't know if the vice mayor wants to go with 5.3 or wait. <laughs> Or you want to? Yes. Right, he's gonna come. All right. So I, I, I think that I, I like to have like five minute reset. Okay. Okay. Five minute break.
So I'd like to, uh, I'd like to thank everyone for waiting. I'm really sorry for that. Uh, so I'd like to reconvene the city council meeting. Okay. All right, so I let everyone uh, come back. Yes. All right, let me find out. I'll let you know when they're ready. Okay. Okay, go ahead. All right, so I'd like to reconvene the city council meeting. And next item would be 5.3 a while. All right, so I'd like to reconvene city council meeting. And next item would be 5.3 a while contract for citywide overlay. Fiscal year 21 to uh, 22 project number citywide overlay. Fiscal year 21 to 22, yeah. Move to approve. Second. Okay. All right, we have a motion and second on the floor. Roll call vote. That motion was made by council member Doe and second from Mayor Tom. And that was to approve the award of contract to the lowest and responsive bidder in the amount of $864,849.65 to COP Contracting Inc. And that all other bids be rejected and authorize a contingency in the amount of $86,484.97 for potential change orders and authorize the interim city manager to execute the contract on behalf of the city. Council member Doe. Yes. Council member Ho. Yes. Council member Monzo. Yes. Vice Mayor Nguyen. Yes. And Mayor Ta. Yes. That motion carried five to zero. All right, next item, 5.4 operating agreement for Bubo proposed at 7130 Fenwick Land. So uh, may I have a staff report? Thank you, Mayor. Before the council tonight is an operating agreement for a digital freeway sign proposed to be located at 7130 Fenwick Lane. On September 15th, the Planning Commission granted a conditional use permit and a variance for this project. The Planning Commission also imposed a series of conditions with the conditional use permit, including one requiring that the city enter into an operating agreement. The proposed operating agreement um, that is attached to the staff report tonight spells out a series of rules or covenants under which the billboard will operate. This is a 30 year deal, which includes payment of a mitigation fee to the city on an annual basis. The annual fee is, begins at $160,000 per year and has an inflator that over time. So it's worth a total value of 6.17 million over the course of the, the 30 year term. The city will also have the ability to provide announcements on the display as well as public safety alerts. Local businesses can also receive a reduced cost to advertise if their primary place of business is here within Westminster, which could be a very nice perk for, for those businesses. The council has directed staff in the past to explore revenue generating uses, and this is one way in which the city can look to improve its fiscal outlook and, and general fund revenues. And several other cities have done this um, in, in recent years. I am happy to answer questions about um, the, the staff report, the billboard. We also have um, a representative from the applicant that is here, Ms. Helene Enriquez, and um, we're here to, uh, yes, assist you with any questions. Yes, I want to thank Alexa for having this item, and I want to ask you anyone, any resident opposed to this item? Any, any resident opposed? or you receive any any concerns. Because of that, based on my experience, anything about the view board, you know, there, there were a lot of concerns in the past, but I don't know now. So that's why I just ask you, any concerns that you receive or any or any question from? There was discussion at the planning commission meeting um, regarding distance to residents and um, and some of some of the things that came up at the planning commission meeting included uh, providing some additional um, screen a screen if you will behind the V of the billboard if you can imagine the billboards a V to put an additional screen here just um, for for aesthetic purposes really more than anything uh, the location of this billboard is within an industrial um, park it is not adjacent to neighborhoods. 
So in terms of a location, it's uh, staff feels it's actually a you know pretty good one. Um, but staff for in preparation for this council agenda, I did not receive any comments from the public. Steve is here as well. Did you receive any comments for or questions before this meeting? I don't specifically recall any comments uh, received, but I, I know that I can confirm that uh, the location of the billboard is more than 500 feet from uh, any residentially zoned property. And therefore, um, none of the residents in the general area came to the meeting to speak in favor or against. I just have a quick question. Please. Okay, so uh, the amount listed here, I mean, sure, I'm excited about receiving $6 million over a 30 year, 30 year term. And so that um, is $160,000 per year. It's really exciting, but uh, I just don't have any comparison. I don't have any point of reference, shall I say. So, I mean, what's everybody getting? Like, what does that represent? 5%, 2% of the, in, the, the uh, you know, income of, of the billboards? Or what is that? So, I mean, I'm giving this big number, but I don't know what percent that is. So how do I negotiate? Staff did try to do a, a comparison between other recent deals that are here in Orange County, and that, that is contained there in the staff report. Each deal is very different. It's hard to get an apples to apples comparison. So, um, you know, for example, the value of a billboard that's along the four or five, as, as this one is, is likely to be higher than one that's on a less traveled freeway, potentially, you know, something like the, the 22. Um, uh, other deals involve other transactions. There may be more than one billboard. It may be a billboard replacement. So there's, it was pretty hard to find a true apples to apples comparison. Um, we, we did work to negotiate with, with the billboard. This, this number is higher than what was originally offered to us. The original offer was 125,000 a year. So we, we did work to get that number up. Um, and with our city attorney's office as well, because they are involved in some billboard deals that are that are outside of Orange County and, and also um, kind of relying on their expertise for what they're seeing in other communities. But again, we, we tried to do a comparative analysis to, to show what's happening here in Orange County. And this, this is um, a high revenue source com compared to what we're looking at nearby. How many different billboards that? That, that we looked at in this analysis? I mean, $160,000 per year. How many different billboards are we talking about? It's a single a billboard with two faces. One single billboard? Mm -hmm. So this is not... Is this just regarding one single billboard? Yes. I have a quick, a quick question. Um, how is this comparing to the one that just uh, north of uh, on the northbound 405 freeway? Uh, I would say around Westminster, uh, Ram. You know what I'm talking about? We do not have any other revenue um, deals with billboards at this point. This would be our first. So... Okay, so that the one that I, I mentioned that is not on CD property. The, I'm, let me pull up a map here. It, we do not have a we do not have a billboard on city property, um, and we do not have an operating agreement with any current billboards. So we there are no billboards in the city that are generating revenue that comes to the general fund. Okay, thank you. So this comes to $13,000 per month, correct? Sounds right. I can do the math here in a calculator. 160. Well, I mean, I'm saying, sure, I take that, but I'm um, just wondering. Yeah. Is, this a, is this one that, uh, how many different ads could you run in, uh, you know, these are digital, these are digital ads, correct? Digital they are. Billboards. Digital. Mm -hmm. they are. They are digital, so, yes. So there's there's a there's a cycle. That's correct. And I I could ask the applicant. She may have more specific information like on how many ads could are you going mm -hmm. planning on? Because I mean, I I advertise on billboards a lot. I'm just thinking like this can't be for one ad. So this is there's got to be how many ads, how many rotations? I uh, give me a rough number, or I'm sure she could give me an exact number. Correct. 
if you could ask her. Mm -hmm. Assistant City Clerk, can you can you pull over? Yeah, thank you. While we wait, I have a. I just want to note this is not on city property, correct? This is on that's private. correct. It's private property. Is this a brand new? Um, is this a brand new? Um, yes. Yeah. Okay. Just constructed. It has not okay. been constructed yet. It has not been. Got it. Yeah. Just to give me some reference point, I'm just thinking. Okay, thirteen thousand dollars a month. That's a lot, but it can also be, it could also be a little, very little compared to, I mean, depends on her answer. So I'm just curious what kind of deal we're getting. So I think still we, waiting for her. Do we have the answer? I believe she's in the, in the room. So I'll bring in her both. Okay. I'm sorry, I was muted and didn't realize it. Uh, I don't have exact revenue figures. Uh, I can tell you that uh, there's an eight, eight image cycle that works here. I think it's about eight images per hour. It just depends on how much of that cycle is used for community service signs, how much it's leased. Um, so it really varies from time to time and, and, and use to use. But um, as Ms. Whittle mentioned, this is a significantly higher amount than we're paying on signs in other parts of Southern California. And, um, and I can tell you that we have an escalator. So even though it starts at 160, it, it escalates um, significantly every, I think, is it five years or 10 years on this one? Every five. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So if, if you um, show. It's a 10% every five years. Right, right. So it'll be potentially. Um, There's also a 10% discount for local Westminster businesses if they want to advertise. I guess that's based on your standard rate. Right, that's correct. Okay. It gives me an idea. Thank you. Can I move Doug, to approve? Well, I, I have a couple, I have a question. Um, on, I just was noticing on the on, on the prohibited use, as far as what the developer shall not utilize or display. Uh -huh. Correct. The one, the one that I the question that I have is about only because I see others other uh, quite a few other billboards, not digital billboards, um, around our city. They are displaying businesses uh, for cannabis use. But here on the prohibited use, it states that it's that marijuana is prohibited. Is that just a mistake on the on the agreement, or or what's or why is this one not going to be allowed, but other ones in the city are? We already have other ones in the city who are currently advertising that now. Um, in terms of the existing billboards, we would need to look into whether or not they're their conditional use permits condition them this way. Uh, it, to condition um, a, a billboard to not show um, adult-oriented businesses of, of some kind is, is pretty normal. Yeah. So I, I wouldn't say it's a, it's a mistake, um, but I, I would have to look into the other billboards to determine whether or not their, their permits had similar conditions on them and we could move forward with the code enforcement citations or something like that. Manage, managing, you. What, you know, billboard advertises is is pretty challenging to be quite honest. I, I just, if, you know, I just think if we need to make sure that everybody's playing on the, on the same ball field, you know, we're not putting one disadvantage in one and allowing others. Um, I don't know if, if the applicant knew about this or I will say that's a very standard requirement, um, particularly when, when as billboard developers, we have the advantage of an operating agreement like this. We typically see a, a very similar list of prohibited uses. So I don't recall uh, if this came from conditional use permit requirements or if it's just what we offered because that's how we operate. Um, but I, I don't believe our company has any issue with the restriction or 
the fact that there may be billboards within the city that are advertising cannabis, um, we would not be. So you you would not be you would not be looking to to do that to advertise cannabis. Well, we we use a. I guess I would describe it as sort of a centralized marketing agents. And so we apply the same policies to, to all the boards we have throughout Southern California. And, and I would say the vast majority, possibly all of them have very similar restrictions on prohibited uses. So we wouldn't be looking to, to, to take advertising from cannabis dispensaries or suppliers or anything. Okay. Thank you. I understand along with the deal that uh, the owner is going to allow the city is going to uh, use it for advertisement and things like that. Is there an, any limitation or restriction uh, uh, how many times per month or number of days? Uh, yes, there is. There's a total, I believe, of five weeks worth of display time, which I, I can also tell you in our experience is, is it's a lot more than it sounds, and we've never had any problem being able to accommodate um, accommodate your requirements. I think it's essentially 35 days total in an annual period, which means that for 35 days, your public service and or, uh, community service announcements, I guess I would say, as opposed to the public safety messages, would be part of the normal eight eight ad rotation for up to 35 days a year. Okay. Yeah, I, I divided uh, that out. It's almost ten percent. That says nine point six percent, if I'm not incorrect. Mm -hmm. Five weeks divided by fifty-two weeks yeah. for the year. So ten percent of the time, we're essentially getting that kind of advertising. Right, and that's so in addition to any public safety messages. So, was there a motion to approve yet on this? There was, but I have a yes, question. There is. Um, I, I second it. Well, before we get going on that, um, so we're able to advertise some city uh, announcements, right? Yes. Well, I don't know if uh, Councilmember Ho can uh, amend her her motion, but I would like to propose that during those announcements of city um, events that no council member, anybody in the council members name or, or image be part of that display. Okay, I can amend that. In the second. Then Give me a second. Oh, the second. maker of the second, would they accept that? Vice Mayor Nguyen? Yes. Yes, can you hear me? Yeah, so the, there was a amendment to the motion. Um, yes, I, I, I heard, I heard okay. that and okay. I'm okay with that. Okay. I'm okay with that. Perfect. So that was a motion made by Council Member Ho and a second by Vice Mayor Nguyen. That was to adopt a resolution entitled A Resolution of the Mayor and City Council of the City of Westminster Approving an Operating Agreement with Outdoor Associates LLC, Digital Freeway, Sign 7130 Fenwick Lane authorizing the execution of the operating agreement with Outdoor Associates LLC, with the exception that council members will not display their image or anything related to them on the billboards. So council member Doe? Yes. Council member Ho? Um, I just wanna say that uh, I thank uh, Councilman um, Manzo for being such a forethinker. I I vote yes. Councilmember Monzo? Yes. Vice Mayor Nguyen? Yes. And Mayor Ta? Yes. That motion carried five to zero. Next item 5.5 appointment of the inner room city manager and approval of employment agreement. Yes, uh, Mayor and Council, at the last council meeting, uh, the council directed that uh, Christine Corden be appointed the interim city manager. Uh, and I indicated that I would return at this meeting with a, an agreement to effectuate that. Um, going back, uh, the term of the agreement would be retroactive to September 13th, which was the day she took over uh, the position. Uh, the, I also need to, pursuant to law, lay out the basic terms of it. 
of the agreement. Uh, essentially, the agreement's going to continue until a permanent city manager is hired, um, but the council does have discretion to terminate it sooner if they choose. Upon termination of the agreement, uh, Ms. Cord uh, Ms. Corden would uh, be allowed to return to her previous position of city clerk slash communications director, uh, unless of course she were appointed to the permanent position. Uh, also, with respect to uh, the compensation, it's essentially the same as what the city manager position pays, uh, which is set at 5% above the total base pay and continuous meritorious service uh, paid to the police chief. So there's always a 5% differential between those two positions for compaction. Um, so, and that comes out to $237,420 annually. In addition to that, uh, the city manager position, uh, as it's stated in the agreement that's attached, uh, would receive a $250 uh, a month auto allowance. Um, that uh, was discussed with the council and, and they would have agreed to increase that to $300 a month. So that would be a, a change that I would indicate that you would approve. If you were to approve this, you would, uh, that would be a change to the agreement. So $300 a month for the auto allowance. All other benefits uh, provided to her are benefits that she already receives uh, in accordance with the terms of the standard compensation resolution for management, administrative and confidential employees. So there's no other changes. And with that, I submit it to you for your consideration. I move, I move to approve. approve. All right, we have the motion and second for this item. That was a motion made by Vice Mayor Nguyen and a second by Council Member Ho. And that was to approve the employment agreement between Christine Cordon and the city of Westminster with the auto allowance increase of, to $300. So council member Doe? Yes. Council member Ho? Yes. Council member Monzo? Yes. Vice Mayor Nguyen? Yes. And Mayor Ta? Yes. That motion carries five to zero. Thank you. Next item, five point six transcript of interview clip from uh, Saigon Entertainment Television. Uh, this item that uh, I have to, uh, I have to state the fact that I, uh, everything that Councilmember Doe said on uh, this uh, uh, television channel is big lie. I mean, like she's been lying in the public. Excuse me, you mean Councilwoman Ho? Yes, Councilwoman Ho. I mean, I'm talking about this item. You, you uh, let me explain. Let me explain first. So a lot of makeup stories. So I first like to reject, you know, everything that Council uh, uh, Ho said in uh, this uh, transcript. Uh, and I, this really cost our city twenty five hundred to do the translation. So uh, I don't know how many. Uh, how many more resources that the city, you know, have to deal with that? I mean, every time she on uh, in a community or in a radio station or TV station, everything she said is a lie. So I want to say the fact, and I reject all that. Yes. Okay. No. Well, the reason, the reason I interrupted uh, you, um, Mary Teresa, because you you say council women to go. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. That's because I'm home. I'm sorry. Yeah. Okay. So that's why I, I just want to correct. I'm sorry for that. Yeah. Right. Um, but the reason I I, uh, I asked the um, the city council to approve the budget to have the interview that council member uh, whole was an interview with could somebody turn off the speaking. I hear a lot of echoes, so thank you. I appreciate it. That's a lot better. Um, so that's why I, I uh, come to the council and ask for the approval of have the um, that particular interview to be translated uh, because there are a lot of serious allegation that were mentioned in that particular interview, and I already went through that uh, the last council meeting. Uh, so basically, uh, it's it's implicated that uh, May Tree Tab were pressuring uh, the 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 then city manager um, Mark Wan Yusuf 
to hire um, former councilman uh, Tyler Dip to become the political consultant for the city. Um, you know, that, you know that it's wrong so many angles uh, in, in terms of hiring Tyler Dip. Number one, he's already an elected official that represent the city of Westminster. He was elected to be um, um, for the director of the Midway Sanitary District, which represents the city of Westminster. So there's a huge conflict of interest right there. And for sure, he's not employable at the city. And it's just like, you know, the city of Westminster hire me, uh, you know, any member of the city council uh, as a pay employee working for, for the city uh, when I'm, uh, I'm an a elected official representing the city as a council member. It, it, it uh, doesn't make any sense. Um, but the allegation was very serious that uh, Mayor Trita was uh, personally involved in negotiating the salary for Tyler Dip, uh, and this indication it was uh, um, it's appeared that the uh, uh, Mayor Trita was uh, pressuring uh, Mat Wan to hire uh, Tyler. Um, it seemed like a form of payment to for him to get the job as city manager. Mr. Uh, I'm no, sorry second, about that. Second, 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 sir. No, no, no. Hold on a second. Hold on a second. Hold on a second. Let me let me finish, and then you can you can counter. No, 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 no. no but let me ask the city attorney that. because you know this is involved like the public staff. We have to be really careful. That's why I want I don't want to mention any uh, individual. You know, well, we are. It's, it's, that, it's, yes. it's already mentioned. It's a it's a public information. But but again, you know. Allegation is allegation, okay? Anybody can make allegation. I get it, I understand. And um, so uh, that's why, but this is, uh, this is uh, city of Westminster, we, the official language is English. So the communicate, the, uh, the interview will conduct in Vietnamese. So we need to have it officially translated in English. So everyone can have a chance to understand what it meant, what was saying, what was the allegation. Um, and, 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 you know, allegations are fact. I get it. Okay. So you don't have to worry about, you know, we as a council just take whatever council woman Kimberly Hole um, tell all on a, on a TV interview and, and, and take this as fact. No, we, we're not little kids. We understand. So, so we, we, we need to have someone to um, be a fact fighter, a, a neutral person. Uh, that can uh, use this uh, translation, this uh, information, and uh, and conduct an, an investigation. And uh, I would uh, I would think that the the appropriate person to uh, to be tasked with this job is the city attorney office, uh, who will hire with direction of city council, who will hire a um, um, an independent uh, investigator who will um, be on a fact-fighting mission to, um, to verify all the allegations that Kimberly Holt, um, uh, the councilwoman Kimberly Holt made, uh, possible corruption, possible uh, a crime involved here. And I give the floor for other council member to make comments. Well, uh... I would like to make a comment. Uh, well, first of all, you know, I am, uh, I, I mean, I'm fine. As a matter of fact, I insist on an investigation uh, because I am uh, rather tired of seeing, um, you know, these, um, I don't like to, to, I don't like to use a word corruption I uh, shall I say just um, wrongdoing um, that have been going on for at least it's been so blatant to me since the beginning of this year. So um, you know, I, I like I said, I, I insist on an invest investigation. Uh, you know, everything I said and I read the the transcript, uh, the translation isn't. Perfect, but I think we all get a gist of the translation. Uh, I don't think there's anything that is 
grossly um, wrong with the translation. Um, there might be a little bit of, um, but I mean, we, we get the gist of it. Uh, I think you all do. And uh, I think the gist of it is that there's, there's a lot of um, things that are going on, um, you know, behind the scenes that we need to shed light and we need to be, um, you know, letting the public be in on it. Um, and namely some of the things that was mentioned was, uh, you know, um, our former interim city uh, manager, uh, Sherry Johnson. Um, I do feel really sorry for those who felt the pressure, you know, um, that were working uh, for our city at the time. Uh, it, it wasn't just Miss Sherry Johnson alone, uh, but there are others, and I'd like all that to stop. And um, what I want our city, uh, what I want to see happen is that our city move forward in a healthy uh, manner, um, putting a stop to all of uh, this wrongdoing and just be on the right track. And so if I hear any more about me lying and things like that, I can tell you that is the one thing that I will see you on. And I will make sure I go all the way to the end if I have to, to make sure I, sh you know, so it's, if you keep saying that and you keep saying that I'm lying, then you know you're, you're in for a big surprise. Uh, uh, so I think you might want to stop while you're ahead. Uh, so to speak, because, um, you know, all I'm, all I'm saying is that you're, the wrongdoing needs to stop. You need to first recognize that you've done wrong. And then second, just, you know, turn around and do the right thing um, to make sure that uh, these, you know, the rest of your staff, those who haven't quit, are going are not going to continue to be pressured by you uh, or anybody else, and that they have a we have a healthy uh, working environment for our staff, and that um, we make decisions, you know, per protocol. And um, but anyway, you you know the right from wrong. I know you do. It's just that if you continue to deny and you continue to call me a liar then I'm going to tell you that I welcome, and I think this is when, this is why I insist on having an investigator, an independent one. I'm not sure if, um, uh, if, if, if the city uh, attorney's office could share with us how he will go about finding an independent uh, investigator, because I'm not sure I trust the city attorney's office at this point. Um, so please do, you know, share with us how you, 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 you will go about doing that. And, and that's something I insist on, on, on you sharing with this, the rest of the council. Thank you. I just want to, before, before you want to speak answer, to that? I just want to say to the city, if council chooses to go that, that direction, then how would you go about it? We use, uh, I mean, there's a number of independent investigators and I, we could hire one that has absolutely nothing to do with the city or any relationship with us uh, that would have no connection. Um, and that person would be completely free from any, from my office. In a sense, what we typically do is hire them and give them a task and then they report back with a report and then we provide that to the city council. And there's no influence on the report. So it's just a matter of finding the investigator, giving them the task. If the council's wants to set forth very clearly what the task is, we just give them exactly that with no other influence. I don't tell them who to interview. I don't tell them, you know, again, we, we do investigations frequently and these are outside investigators who do this 
repeatedly and they're they, they bias their decisions based on who's hiring i mean okay. we always keep these independent I, I like what i hear so far from you chris uh, christian and i I'd like to to trust the system. I'd like to trust the uh, you know what you will you know the protocol that you will um, use um, to execute in, in finding a, an independent, a true independent uh, investigator. I, I just want to make sure that the investigator is asked point blank if they know anybody on the council. I would not want that an investigator to be biased, uh, whether they, you know whether it be. Um, purposeful or not. If you'd be more comfortable with it, you can come up with a name or two and then probably present it to the city manager and you can double check that this is a person that uh, does not have connections with Westminster. And usually they're former police officers from another agency that have retired and they've gone into investigatory work. They've, uh, they've done investigations during their career. All right. I guess. Uh, okay. And what other ways would you investigate? I mean, <clears throat> what other ways? Uh, just I, I don't know. I've never gone yeah, this okay. route. I, I, you know, I would like to um, get the um, Orange County District Attorney um, Office of Law and also the State Attorney General Office to get them if they can uh, show any interest to look into it and uh, and uh, you know uh, my question is to you to the council put some uh, whoever not talking could you turn up the mic so I got a lot of echo uh, uh, Christian uh, will you be so kind and explain to the council um, how do we get the uh, the Orange County District Attorney Office uh, to get involved in it, to look into this matter, and uh, also the uh, attorney general office, because because these are very serious allegations that uh, that's a misappropriate public fund by uh, elected official. Um, can I ask some something before uh, city attorney answers? It seems like we're trying to avoid having this, you know, putting our staff in. In a, in a difficult position, um, you know, there's been convers we've had conversations like that in the past. Um, is there a way for us just to direct our city interim city manager to just to find an independent investigator on on her on her own, and then have not have our put our city attorney's office. On this, on this total spotlight kind of pressure, he's on. He's already dealing with counsel on one way and trying to hire an investigator to investigate the counsel he's representing. I don't know if it's something that would kind of take the, the pressure or the away from the city attorney's office. Well, in in one sense, and I'm trying to think this through, um, there's confidentiality issues. Um, when something like this arises, assuming you know you're comfortable with that, uh, if it goes through my office, it's a consultant that's hired through me. It's there's a protection there in terms of it being a public record. Uh, there's litigation exposure, but ultimately the council would get to review that, and then a majority of the council can decide what to do with it. So if the council felt that there was evidence within the report, they could then take that and. Uh, deliver that to the DA, or in some cases, you're more comfortable giving it to the Attorney General or the Department of Justice. It's all depending on the circumstances of, uh, you know, if something, if you're not comfortable with the DA, but normally it would be the DA's office. They have a public corruption unit. Um, they would consider the evidence and make their own independent decision based on their own investigation, based on what you submitted, and determine if it's something that they feel is, could be prosecuted or not. Um, but uh, at some point, whether it's an individual would submit that to them or the city council, based on whatever evidence you, you gather from an investigation, you could submit that. Um, but we don't interfere with them once they get involved. They, they take precedence and they would, 
if they want to investigate something, we stay out of the way. And um, then they make their own independent term determination as an enforcement agency. Um, I might just feel um, some comments that, <clears throat> I mean, I don't know how, how much clearer I can be that, you know, that um, this is not an, an, not an attack on somebody because of how I feel about a person or, or in any way, shape, or form, have any bias towards the, in this case, is the mayor, which is, I'm always trying to do my best to be impartial, to hear what's, what's going on. And in this case, I'm kind of like on the outside looking in as far as how a lot of this plays out in the Vietnamese language on Vietnamese radio and whatnot. Based on what I'm from, what I hear, I mean, these are pretty serious allegations, and I think it's warranted that we try to find out what the truth is, and more importantly, the public has a right to know. We are here to represent the public, and if there's a member of the council guilty of some impropriety, the public has a right to know what's the truth. So um, I'm not out to get anybody. I never have been. It may seem like from the uh, certain people that I am because of all the bickering that goes on in this council, but I'm not. So I think this what's warranted. It's allegations have been made, and we need to find out whether it's true or not. Well, um, I. I let, let me throw one thing in there, and, and, and I didn't suggest I should have, which is that if you want to remove me from that um, situation, what you do is you hire independent legal counsel to, to, to do the hiring of the investigator. Essentially do the same thing, but it's through, a, through a, a, an attorney hired through the city manager's office. Say you would get the same protections and then you would select the investigator and that person would report to that attorney who would then in turn report to the council. I would say at this time, uh, there's no need to do that. I believe I, uh, at this time, I can trust uh, the city attorney's office, um, our city attorney's office. So I think we will go ahead and I would recommend, I would make a, a motion to move forward with um, the hiring of the independent investigator uh, with the help of uh, our city attorney, um, city attorney's office. Um, after reviewing this interview or the interview clip, uh, the transcript that is. So I would make a motion to do that. I have, I have, been, waiting, I have been waiting for you guys to speak and now it's my turn. Uh, I would like to have uh, my points. Um, I do feel uh, my sympathy for you, uh, Council Member uh, Menzo, that you can't, um, you know, hear or understand Vietnamese through the talk show or to the script that uh, Council Member Ho uh, made on uh, set TV. But there's one important fact that I need to let you know that out of five people here, which you uh, you are exception uh, because you you don't want, you didn't hear or understand the script. Three out of four, beside Council Member Ho, already said that Council Member Ho lied on that video. I said it. You know, I I, I I'm not afraid to say that because I said that before that Council Member Ho don't lie to the community anymore. And I said, you are lying and on that, uh, that and, and uh, Mayor Ta also said, just said that you are lying. And council member though, let me share with you this one here. That you tried on the, um, that you twice on, can you see it? 
Can everyone see that? That you twice go on two different channels and said that Mem uh, Kasum Member Ho lied in that video. Did you say that, uh, Kasum Member Do? You did here. One that on, on 87 and 88, you went on with Kai Dao. You said that he is lying. That particular video. And on the 88, you went on the YouTube with uh, another person, which is, I think, Lam Quang Thai. You said he see is lying, the same script. So the script that you are talking right now, you said twice that Council Ho is lying, was lying. I said she is lying. And uh, Mayor Ta said she is lying. How credible is that for this video script? Okay, you yourself, Council Member Do, you said twice. At least I said it once now but you said twice already so you know i don't i don't see the credibility for this script to go on but you know you guys want to make an investigation that between you guys go ahead and do it if you want to waste the money fine but you are going against yourself when you already admit that this is she's lying so that's all i have All right, so I, I think the council had the motion and the second on the floor. Yeah, I, I uh, you know, I, I have to uh, agree with uh, the woman uh, that uh, at this point, we need to uh, isolate the interim team manager from taking the responsibility of dealing with this uh, so-called conflict. So the, uh, and I have the and task the uh, city attorney office to take the responsibility to find an independent um, um, investigator to carry out the task to uh, conduct a thorough investigation. Um, like I say earlier, um, allegation is allegation; they're not fact. Okay, we have to find uh, evidence to prove what she her allegation is true then it become fact. So um, keep repeating lying, lying, it doesn't make any sense. Okay, we're not a little kid. We don't just take people's words as fact. That's why we need to have somebody um, go on a, a fact-fighting mission to investigate these allegations. Thank you. All right, I think we have a motion and a second on the floor. We don't have a second. Okay. I second it. And do we have a, a, a deadline, a, a timeline for this to happen? Should we include on a motion? I'm, I'm going to have to defer to you want to finding an investigator, finding how long it takes, how many people they're going to talk to. Um, usually, what happens is they start down a road and they determine. Those people say, well, you should talk to X, Y, and Z, these people. It, so it's hard to know exactly how long it will take at this juncture. You, you leave it to them oh, to. Uh, let me clarify that I'm talking the time <clears throat> like to hire an independent uh, investigators by the next council meeting. Uh, would you think that you have enough time to um, find someone? Yes. Two weeks? Thank you. All right. Okay, so that was a motion made by council member Ho and a second from council member Doe. And that was to have the city attorney's office hire an independent investigator to, ver to verify council member Ho's allegations by the next city council meeting. Council member Doe? Yes. Council member Ho? Yes. Council member Monzo? Uh, yes. Vice Mayor Nguyen? Crap. No. And Mayor Ta? No. That motion carried 3-2 with Vice Mayor Nguyen and Mayor Ta voting no. All right, uh, next item 5.7, sale of accept property located at Liberty Park, 13900 Monroe Street. 
in the room? City manager? Thank you. So this is a request uh, that was received from council member Ho um, to place the item on the agenda regarding um, the sale of a portion of Liberty Park, which um, took place in 2016. Um, at the time, the uh, the property was sold for $100,000, um, 10,200 square feet, um, which was valued then at $9.80 per square foot. Um, Council Member Ho has since um, expressed some concerns regarding the sale, and so I will pass along to her for, um, you know, since this is her item. Thank you. Okay, so first I wanna ask the city clerk's office uh, how you decided to uh, name this subject, uh, this agenda as a sale of excess property. Why would you call that excess property? Are we like, uh, what is, why do you decide to title it that? Are you, are you talking about the item that we're talking about right now? 5.7. 5.7? Because it says here, subject, sale of excess property located at Liberty Park. Yes, so because the item that was in question was called excess property located at 13900 Monroe Street, and that was the original staff report from 2016. So we attached the, we attached the agenda report from that meeting to this report to reference what it is that this report is essentially about, which is that sale of excess property located at Liberty Park. Oh, you're muted. You are muted. Okay, I guess I will accept your explanation, but for the record, there's no excess property at any park. So I wanna make that clear. So um, some background for everybody is that from our general plan, open space and parkland are limited and a valuable resource, which must be conserved whenever possible. So that's in our general plan stated. Our city's population is growing. The need for park open space land is projected to be 355 acres. We currently only have 97.8 acres of uh, park or a total of 121 acres when counting open spaces. As you can see, our population once built out will be 118,000. And the need for park and open space is about 354 acres. We currently only have a third of that. So we don't have excess quote unquote, excess land or uh, park land. The information above that I just read to you, I got from the Director of Community Services and Recreations email, uh, Diana Daubert. You could confirm the numbers with her. Okay, so I recently heard about the sale of Liberty Park and I am appalled by it. I'm just shocked, okay. Uh, Who's watching out for our city? The sale occurred uh, before I came on the council, July 27, 2016, and uh, by way of quick claim. So you quick claim your city park. Okay, so out of the current five city council members here today, only one was a party to the, to the so-called transaction. And that was no one other than our beloved city mayor. Everything about this transaction was so shady and I would like to order an independent investigation, another independent investigation. It's either gross negligence on the mayor and councils at um, the council at that time and the office of the city, of attorney, uh, city attorney, or this is a great mafia minds at work. I want to know who are all responsible for this? Here's what we know. These are facts. The park land in question is 10,200 square feet at the average of $35 to $50 per square foot versus what it was valued. I'm sorry, that was basically um, the value at that time in 2016 was about 35 to 50 square feet. So that would have been 350,000 to 500,000 thousand dollars 
for 10,200 square feet of that park land that was sold. Instead, it was sold at $100,000, so about 95 cents per square foot, not to mention how it was sold. The sneaky way um, this was agendized was definitely a concern as if it was intended to defraud our city. It was placed under the consent calendar and did not mention the name of the park, but instead, you know, they used the, the address of the park, 13,900 Monroe Street. Do we know the address of our park, our nearest park? No, no one goes by the address of the park. State law indicated clearly that it is illegal to sell park land without um, um, a minimum, a requirement as such as a no public notice. Our, our park land was sold through quick claim, this park, the Liberty Park piece that um, that's in question. The email from director uh, Diana Dauber indicated that she was reminded when this was happening. Um, I'm sure more will be revealed through the investigator, the investigation. She was reminded that she was an at-will employee and that person, I'm not going to reveal names simply because I, I'm sure uh, in due time, the investigator will know the whole entire story. But her, um, her boss, her, her direct report said it meant she was, she's always on probation and therefore should not question this, con this transaction. Council member, I just would be careful, be careful in terms of who we implicate. On. We're not just, implicating anybody. Right. I just want to be careful. Uh, I am careful. Thank you. Our city, is, our city has been robbed. What do you want me to do? Not only did we sell our park land illegally, we sold it grossly under market. And as if that's not enough, I'm so upset. I also found out that our city has been maintaining this piece of land for the last five plus years for the person we sold it to since the day it was sold. I would like to order this full investigation regarding number one, the illegal sale of our piece of Liberty Park that was sold through quick claim in August of 2016. I believe the people would like to know who are the masterminds behind the sale. And I demand that our city attorney get that piece of park land back for the people of Westminster. Who are the real owners of the land? Who are the owners of the land? It was sold illegally. I believe the sale should be null and void. So I'm going to give the floor back to the rest of the council to speak. All right. So uh, uh, I mean, I did uh, this item, I think that in 2016, in response, uh, to, uh, I mean, like another wrong accusation from Kaohsiung Boho. Uh, to me, I like the inner room city manager to read a letter from attorney because it's that letter relating to this item. And then I will explain more. So please, inner room city manager, can you please read a letter from the other attorney? And I want no, I don't think that's please, no. Please, I, I please. object. This is a letter. I you know, this is this is relating to the Number item. One, so no, I have the right to ask. Not. No, to ask the inner room city manager to read a letter. So please. No, wait, you wait, know, wait, our wait. city manager, a city attorney. We should not be allowed to read that in public because number one, as you stated in close the session, potential litigation. Potential litigation. So I mean, please, like, but put a stop to that. At me, I mean, like, and I mean, Again, like, the you, attorney, you, you, have you know, to be is it is it not a fact? Is it not a fact? This is what we're so, talking about here. This is a letter. It's a fact. You try not to try not to. You know what? So please, 
No. You know, the, the, who the, do you work the, for? The, who do you work for? Do you work for a city or do you work for? No, for, I work for the friends? city. That's why, you know, the public no, needs to hear the other side, the other side you of the city. Not. And you I sold asked, our parkland. you know, the letter to be read. How so please you read the letter. Sold our parkland and no, now please you're read the letter. Can we let the city attorney answer the question if he, he's aware of that? City attorney. Ultimately, I do not agree with But why are you afraid of, you know, because that's you know, something you read in public. The other side of the story. No. Okay, wait, 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 wait a minute. Wait a minute. No, 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 no. Let me ask you this. Let me ask you this. Okay. Well, who do you work for? Who, who was who was the council? Who was in the council back then in 2016? Do we know? Yes, we do. Uh, I, mean, we I, have, uh, I mean, the people need to hear the other side of the story. So okay, uh, I demand, let, 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 okay. I demand the staff to read yeah. the letter. Facts. Okay. Fact. Fact. I mean, like, fact. I have the right to ask the staff to read the letter. Stop. Fact. Fact. Okay, was no, I mean, like, that part I that want, piece of our but park why are you afraid of? sold or not? Okay, yes, I it demand was. the staff need fact, to do the letter. Okay, you know what? It's, it's, you it's, need to allow an illegal you know, the letter process. to be read. Yes, it's, what? It's, it's, but why are you afraid of a letter? Go so quit playing the part. Why are you afraid of a letter? How dare you talk your way out of it? I want Just a second. I don't want to hear that letter. No. Listen, I don't want to hear that letter. I have a question. I have a question regarding this. Okay. I want this stop. Is, I just want the public to hear the honest side of the story. So, City Attorney, well, 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 you I have the begin. right to I ask quit. our staff to read the letter. That's no. for the I mean, you the do not tell the our fact. staff to do the anything to make yourself look good. The public, need to, know, the public good. need to hear the, no. the other side of the story. The, the, you are the trying to, to what? Away I have from, the right to ask staff you're to read away the letter with murder. not relating to the other letter is this? The letter that you know we all received from our Address attorney, from the attorney. Address to who? So stop. To all Address us. To, who? to all of us. To well, all. That's of not us. public information. Okay. Uh -oh. So, okay. see, let me, let me, I have the right. I have that right. No. You have no right on that. Please, you sold please. our land. Our people have the right. I didn't right. sell any land, but you are lying. You again. sold so, our land. So, uh, see, the attorney. How dare you? Now you're trying to get away with it. I'm running the meeting. I have the right to ask I can to read. No, that if you city attorney, if you allow that, I'm going to I'm gonna have to go to the higher up. I can tell you that. Yes, we are not going to If you're gonna read that letter, why but because you're afraid of a letter. So I'm not afraid of the letter. We address we address that letter in closed session. We are not no, going to no, address I'm that a letter in email to all of us. Because you again can expose no, our- No, you know, but why you fire the letter? The public need to hear the other letter. side of the story. The right but thing. why are okay, you afraid trying to do everything your way? But why no. are you afraid of the letter? My question to you, why are you afraid of the letter? Why? I think the letter is the real- Can we have Can we have? Why don't you answer the question? You said you were the mayor. You want to No, no, no. Hold, hold on. Very uh, uh, see the attorney. Calendar. See the attorney. I have the right. There's nobody talking about to that. The no. Talk about I have, but the why are you afraid? The letter will be available. I, mayor, you the mayor. The letter. You run that. You run that. No, no, no. Come on. on. Let me talk. Let me finish. Oh, for the vice mayor. Jump in. You got to end. Let's relax. Relax. I have the right to ask staff to read the letter. I know. Obviously. There's nobody really running this meeting right okay, now. Okay, again, you're oh, yeah. trying to. Okay, I'm sure you leader. asked them leader. to write that letter just so you could it could be read in public. But no, you know I what? I didn't ask anyone to write any letter. Okay, that well, letter this is trying to be read in public. Letter. That's, that's a letter. That's a letter. That's a letter. letter. Need to know. So, I'm talking. So, I my question to see the attorney. I have the right to ask staff to read the letter. No, the. the, the no, 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 you no let the right city attorney well, no, 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 no. Okay. How come you didn't let the, the city attorney to answer my question? The city attorney oh, have no I right. Have the right. Who's right I have wrong. the right to ask the city attorney a okay, question. I make the motion. So why didn't you let, a, why didn't you let the city attorney answer matter. my question? Why didn't you let the city attorney to answer my question? But let him answer my question first. And then you guys can talk whatever you want. So, no, 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 let the city attorney, I have the right to ask, you have the right to ask that. I have the right to ask the city attorney. So, city attorney, can you answer my question? Do we have that right? Do we have that right? I called the question. I called the question. You did not let the city attorney to give 
Do we have a close? No, it's set? about time. It's about no, no, time. No, no, no. Let the city stop attorney. your wrongdoing. It's about Let time. Let the city you attorney stop your answer my now. question because why you are no, afraid we're of not. a letter? No, a we're, letter. Not. we're going to stand up to you. Need to hear stop the your wrongdoing now. Story. I respect, you know, you can say whatever you want, but let the city attorney answer my question. Stop playing, James. Attorney. I would suggest we have a closed session so we can discuss this. We discussed this matter. This matter. matter. Okay. I, mean, I, demand, I demand the public to know the letter. I mean, okay, okay. Hey, we, we, we're talking about the letter right, there, right now. I need you to have get your my point over, across. You have your letter. Oh, you have your. You ask over your friend to write that letter that. just so you this can read it in open public. So that the public is need to know. That's what you're doing. The public need to know the other side of the story. Why, why don't you read it? You but why do you represent the other side of the story? What is your problem? But why you write a letter? You let, let me say something then. You sold it. Why? 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 Part of saying is wrong. Part of what I'm saying is wrong. Come on, vice okay. mayor. Come on. If you are afraid of public to know the matter, then why you are having, uh, why you were having uh, the the press conference about this matter? Just only about this matter. Okay. Okay. So, you know, if you want to be transparent, that's not the process. Okay, if you want to be transparent, that's just not then the let process. it, let him go ahead and, and, and uh, the, the staff it's with the letter. It's potential litigation. It no. It's just not how you handle the, the process. public to know the letter. I mean, like, you can say whatever you want, but I demand the public need to know the letter. I mean, like, because well, it's about we all received you... the same letter, but why are you afraid of the letter? I ask you all the time, why are you guys afraid, afraid of the letter? letter. There's a letter. Hey, we're not afraid of the letter. We're not afraid of the letter. It's just not right now. You are That's the man. You are the man. What kind of mayor are you? What kind of mayor are you? My gosh. That's a letter. The public need to hear the others. You know what? What kind of liar are you? Because remember the whole product. I want to make a motion to move this item. This is a very serious issue here. Let's take the hands, send this to DA, the grand jury, whatever needs to happen. I mean, it seems like here we're getting you know, to know we, we, we need to discuss the reason why we want to talk about this, okay? This item, the sale of this particular piece of property will vary in the consent calendar. And it went through without the staff report disclosed in the meeting. It was approved with one vote and buried in the consent calendar. And that is, that, that is my concern. And again, these are allegations. These are not facts. Okay. So we need to understand exactly what happened. Well, there is okay. fact. Okay. You were. Well, these are facts. I mean, it was sold and it was through quick claim. That's not the process. Can I suggest that we hold the close By session. law, you cannot sell a park. And okay, so I understand. City attorney, city attorney. Right. Well, I think wrong. city attorney, so, city attorney you know he, he wants to say something. No, I attorney. want to say that we have a closed session so that we can have a discussion. There is a concern from some council members that the disclosure of the letter is a potential litigation item. And so- Why would you not be concerned, Mr. City Attorney? Why would you not be concerned? Wait, just a second. It is a city, it's, it's an a, a letter from an attorney. That's just not how you handle the process. If it is hey, something listen. that came from an attorney, are, it should right. not be that's disclosed. Why, that's why I said in closed session. Okay. So that's why I'm saying that you should also be concerned that. Okay. and that should be your statement is that you are concerned, Mr. City Attorney. That should be, that's what you that should, should be, be saying statement, to Kristen. us. That is a potential litigation. Okay? Because the attorney, I mean, they, they specifically answer, say that you don't want the attorney that so that client mentioned. That, that is why I wanted to talk about it in closed session. Okay? I just okay. have a question for uh, City Attorney and, and Holly, city, city Manager. Was this, as Council Member, Post stated as far as the procedures of selling a public land, was the procedure followed by law by placing it on the consent calendar? No public notice. Was that all? No legal? staff report. No staff report. Was it? Is that the way that we the public land is sold legally? Parkland. I want the city attorney explain. 
Out of time, we have the That's city it. manager, the assistant city manager, and the city attorney office. So I, I believe, I think that at a time, the whole city council, we assume that the, the item was led by the city attorney office. We have the assistant city manager, we have the city manager, we have a city attorney. And, and you know, I really want to know why it, you know, it was in a consent too, yeah. For myself, I'm really open to the public, yes. So I want the city attorney to explain. At the time we have the city manager, assistant city manager, the city attorney office, and all the document, I, be, I think, you know, need to go to the city attorney office. And this item was not, I, I believe that none of the council at a time aware of, you know, the staff level. If you read, if you, if you read the staff report, so I want the city attorney to explain the process. I'm really, I'm open book. Don't worry about that. I want the city attorney to, to explain the process, but I still think that the public need to, you know, need to know the letter. The other side, I'm sorry. Okay, but I want the city attorney to explain the process. If, if I could. If I could. Can I ask one more quick? Can no, we please, find please. Out while you're finding that out, how did the council vote on this item? So let the city attorney explain the process at a time. Well, what I would say about this is that this is honestly the first I'm aware of it. I know that there was a reference to having some closed sessions. I looked up the APNs at issue and none of them referenced this part. I don't recall this. Um, there was a, I, when I saw the letters involved in this, I looked into this. It, I, this is what I will say. It is highly popular and we should look into it because uh, it's very problematic um, because we don't ever sell property in content. And if I had known that it was a park, that would have triggered some, you know, alarms in my head that we, we don't do that because there is a very set process to dispose of parkland. What's problematic here, as has already been mentioned, is that one, it was on consent. Consent calendar, as is stated on the agenda, is for routine matters that don't require discussion. Well, the sale of property, uh, and certainly the sale of a park would require discussion. It's, uh, it's also sold by quick claim deed, which is uh, not normal. Um, I'm very concerned because it, it doesn't reference park at all, but rather uses 13900 Monroe. Um, and all these if I may interject, Mr. Christian Bentonhausen, is that not only was it on a consent calendar, it was directly under what is well, it was directly under the title of um, what is that? Um, uh, this property. I'm sorry. Um, what is the title uh, right above it? It was uh, routine matters, routine yeah. matters. So it was directly what's above it was routine matters underlined. Okay. Somebody really tried hard and, you know, to hide this sale. And I can tell you that, okay, I want to know whose pocket it went to. Okay. A hundred thousand dollars for 10,200 square feet. Okay, when it should have been sold for at least a minimum of $400,000. And then, you know, and then on top of that, we maintain it. I'm just so shocked at the level of fraud that we I'm seeing. And that this is I uncovered with very, I mean, it, with very little effort. So if I look some more, I'm going to find more. So I'm just very shocked. And I have been shocked ever since I found this out. So I just, I don't know what happened to my agenda when I'm, um, if I may ask so, Christine, so what, I would what say happened is, to the agenda that I, uh, I said from this day forward, I do, I want to, uh, I want us to agenda something that's going to uh, require the city attorney to look into the matter of maybe come up with a protocol, come up with a policy, come up with how do we, uh, sell, I mean, we should not be selling parkland, but if we do, or any land for that matter, wouldn't we at least have a public hearing? Because yes. this is a public matter, a public land. That's why I'm saying somebody 
really yeah, tried to hide there's this. a two there's a two-step process first of all it all depends on how we acquired the property so i've been doing some research on that um but bottom line in this particular case you have to first terminate its use as a park and there's a whole process that involves a public hearing uh that, that we'd have to go through with notice publication holding a hearing a protest vote so and, did that happen and uh, not in this case uh, and then, and then, and only then do you then dispose of the property. So that to me is problematic. So this is something that we need to look into. If we don't look into this, then, then, then we're really saying we're, if we don't, don't look into no, this, I swear. Uh, 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 let me speak. I don't disagree with the city attorney. I, and I want to have the investigation too. I don't have a problem with that. I don't have a problem with that because, you know, I, I want to know that how come at a time we have the city attorney, we have the city manager, assistant city manager, and that kind of item did not go true. And I and I believe none of the council at the time aware of that. Hey, I don't I don't disagree that we have investigation. Yes, I don't disagree. But what I'd like to see that I want everything open up. Yes, the public need to need to know the letter. But I mean like, hey, if we if we need to have a close section to this discuss about the item, I don't mind. And I don't disagree with the investigation. I'm an open book. So don't worry about that. At a time we have the city manager, assistant city manager and a city attorney. And I assume at a time everything needs to be vetted by the city attorney office. And the council at a time, I believe None of us was aware of that. And you know, if you read this, if you read the staff report, that came from staff. If you read the staff report, yeah. Uh, can, uh, can somebody answer my question as far as how did council vote on this uh, consent calendar on this, for this agenda? I could answer that. And that, that well, first of all, the council people that were there, council member Rice, Contreras, uh, Diana Carey, uh, Mayor Trita all voted yes. And uh, Tyler Dick abstained, which is very, very weird. Uh, you That's would abstain on a consent why, calendar. Why would, why would Tyler Dip, council member Dip abstain on a my, my it? Guess, my guess items. would be he there was enough votes to pass it. And so therefore he did not want to look I mean, he didn't want to be involved, so he abstained, basically. Me like he's a pretty that would be my guess. Did, did he abstain for this particular item or the whole consent calendar? The whole entire consent calendar. Okay, so that is not, you know, to answer, to answer uh, Council Member Menzel, that what it is normally is, is, is the whole um, consent calendar instead of one item. That's pretty odd that it, that is odd. Somebody would abstain from a consent calendar. I have a question. Somebody knew, somebody knew what he was knew what was happening. You may have a question with uh, Christians. Um, I remember um, during a couple of comments, um, Terry Raines, she would mention that there were two closed session meeting um, early in the year before that. Uh, sales took place one in january one in march or something like that 2016 you you do you remember from the top of your head that uh, something like that took place because i don't, it, re I don't remember personally any discussion regarding this it's, the sale of a park would have concerned me um i did look up the apns or those those meetings as while we were having this discussion. One of those, the second one, I believe, refers to a development along Beach Boulevard, an apartment um, construction. So I had looked at both of the meetings in April that she referenced. One of them is an APN number and I had that looked up. And it's uh, that long, thin development that we did along Beach Boulevard. Uh, so there was a closed session to discuss that. The January one, the APN doesn't exist. There's a APN I searched it up and that parcel doesn't exist, but it does appear to be close to the park. It's an APN that 
the last digit is is off. So um, all I can say is that there may have been a discussion at that January meeting. I don't recall it. I was never involved in this transaction. The only legal document in there is a quit claim deed, which would not be something that we would do, nor does it look like something that would be prepared by my office. So I would just say, and it needs to be looked into. Okay, oh, so could, could you, uh, could you uh, look into uh, that? Because for some reason, uh, uh, Ms. Terry Raines were very uh, insisting that, uh, that uh, the closed session took place. So, um, and you know, I'm, I'm really concerned um, that, you know, the sales of uh, a piece of uh, CD lands uh, apart um, which is, uh, doesn't seem like it was, uh, conducted, uh, properly and, uh, it doesn't cause, uh, uh, only cause, um, the concern to, between me, uh, among me, uh, uh, council member Menzo and council member Hole, you know, uh, Mayor Trees, I seem like it's, uh, it's a routine, it's normal. And, uh, that's why it's under routine it's, matters. It's kind of unusual. It's kind of unusual. You know, uh, it, it's it's uh, maybe it was uh, conducted legally, uh, but we need to know the, why the procedure of selling a piece of park land was uh, was not disclosed to the public and 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 was not uh, um, discussed um, in a, a open session, a staff report, um, and it was buried under the consent calendar and just like. Um, you know, with just one vote without discussion. It's just, uh, it's, it, it doesn't uh, pass the smell test. So. Well, I would like to order, the, I, uh, I, I'm gonna need the city attorney, um, Mr. Bettenhausen. You know, I'm, I don't feel comfortable uh, ordering the private investigator because I feel like um, this is severe enough and I think uh, we need to order the grand jury or the DA, I'm not even OCDA, but attorney general. How, how do we go about doing this and get their involvement? Because, you know, when you have an independent investigator and people are, they, are they going to cooperate? I wanna make sure when people lie, they lie under oath and that they're, you know, they could, be in a lot of trouble lying to a federal um, agent. So I don't want him just to be just some investigator doing the work on this. Mr. Bettenhausen? Well, if you instruct us, then we could, we could uh, approach each of those entities, whether the DA or I could look into how and submit it and then see if they'll they're willing. I don't to want I don't I I don't want the OCDA. Okay, so I think I, I would prefer the uh, grand jury or attorney general. And um, but you know I I uh, you know the um, the district attorney Todd Spitzer you know during his campaign you know, he was pretty big in uh, corruption very anti. Uh, corruption. So um, I am I'm hope that he uh, will follow through with his uh, campaign uh, slogan that uh, he will uh, thoroughly look into this and uh, see to it if there's any uh, wrongdoing and, uh, and uh, make sure that uh, justice is served. Um, so it's, 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 it's right now at this point, it's, a, it's, it's just an allegation. There's no, um, we need to have a uh, thorough investigation on this. Well, uh, Councilmember, I don't think there's a, there's a lot of legal issues here that they didn't were, they weren't followed. So this more than it's not really an allegation. Mm -hmm. We saw there that the proper procedure, the legal procedure, was not followed on the sale of this of this park. So it's more than an allegation. We there's public record showing that the, the proper legal procedure was not followed. I, I totally understand, but then, you know, there might be the mitigating circumstances where they have to bypass the procedure. So at this point, you know, I'm, I'm just uh, asking the council to withhold your judgment until we have a, a thorough investigation. It's only fair. 
I mean, yeah. I, I don't take sides here, so. All right. I hope you understand. Yes. So is the direction to investigate it or to try to submit it for investigation by an uh, enforcement agency? Enforcement agency. And who may that be? Well, like I said. Okay. What if, what if they say no, then we need to have an independent investigation. Why don't we I, do both? I can come back and can we report do both? and you can make a decision at that point. Can we do uh, both? Why don't we, why don't we do po both? Uh, as soon as when any, any uh, law enforcement agency that, that step in, uh, we will instruct an independent investigator to step back and let the, uh, any law enforcement uh, uh, agency that has jurisdiction on this will take over. I think this this do both will have to be uh, Orange County DA and the state attorney have have the, this submitted to both their offices. Councilmember, oh, you want to make a motion on oh. that? Yeah. Yes, I would like to make that motion, but the may I, uh, I'd like to add that number one is that we, uh, could we please uh, stop selling our park? And, uh, and then uh, I'd like the, you know, our city attorney to please put together, a, um, I guess that would be um, some kind of, um, what would that be called? Um, like a protocol or something i'm sorry but we already have that's already the legal legal way of doing it right city Where? state law no we don't have but that that is state law are we adopting that i it's not clear because when i was doing my research i can't get um a clear answer on i don't think mr bettenhausen you could even give me a straight answer on what is our policy on selling park land or our protocol or our well, no, th there's there's very clear law on, on on what needs to be done it all depends on how we acquired it so if we acquired it with grant or bond funds we have to use it for those purposes if we got it as a donated property that had restrictions on it we have to make it subject to those restrictions um, in this case it looks as though we purchased the property um, i learned that actually from diana daubert that uh, I want to say in the 70s sometimes, we purchased a big portion of the park for a set amount and then a second parcel was donated from the same people as part of that transaction uh, to the city, which included this particular parcel. So um, we, we do know that we hold it in fee, which means you then have a very set process which requires that we, we have that public hearing. There's the notice posting at the park, uh, holding the hearing, we hold a protest vote, and then there's an election. And so it's, a, it's an extensive process that you have to go through uh, in order to make it not park anymore. And once you then finish that process, then you can sell it. And okay, so, so there's so many things wrong with this transaction. Uh, so, okay, so as long as something, a protocol's already in place, a uh, policy in place, um, then I would be fine with that. So Before moving we, forward, uh, I Sorry, sorry, Councilmember Hope. Um, I just something I just thought about something of, you said that you mentioned that that, that park, that, that's that 10,000 square feet is currently or has been maintained by our, ci our city, is that, is that correct? Yes. So my question now becomes, why is that happening? And, and if it is, was the owner of this property, has the owner of this property been paying our city to maintain it? Well, that was what I, um, uh, want, uh, as part of what I read to you earlier was that I request our city attorney to um, work on, number one is getting our parkland back to us. Number two is to figure out how much do these folks owe us for maintaining all these years, plus, plus, meaning plus interest, plus fees, whatever, admin fees, et cetera, et cetera. Because I know when somebody doesn't pay us, 
uh, in time or if they have a balance. I know we, we charge them an in, uh, admin fees and whatever fees. I started kind of talking briefly to um, uh, our director, um, Aaron Bax, our finance director um, regarding that. So, but I will, that's why I'm only going to, I'm going to delegate or I'm going to ask for that to be uh, the numbers to be clear. And then you can bring that back and let us know, the, you know, whatever the amount is, well, I'm only going to state clearly that we need to, uh, I'm going to restate that. Number one is figure out how to get our park back to us because it was sold illegally. Number two is to get the amount that we, that um, the owners, I know since then, since June, it has changed hands. So the ownership has changed, but whatever it is, whoever owed us, figure it out, plus, plus, interest, et cetera, admin fees, et cetera. And, um, and then also order um, an investigation by the law enforcement body. And, and are we conducting the in, the investigation ourselves as well? At the same time? Yes. Um, yes. And that's a motion. I'll second it if nobody seconded it. Um, all right, we have a motion and a second on the floor. Council Member Doe? Yes. Council Member Ho? Yes. Council Member Monzo? Yes. Vice Mayor Nguyen? Well, if there was any wrongdoing for, you know, for selling the piece of uh, parcel, I would you know, put it back to the council that who make that decision five years ago. And who are they? They are Marjorie uh, Contreras, the Ann Carey, and Tyler Dip and Merita. So they are, they are the one who I don't know why, if there is any wrongdoing and they, they are let it go. Well, it's, it must be something. So I, you know, because I don't know much about it. I'm not going to get involved. I'm not going to get in back in, involved back into the item that, you know, 20 years ago made by some councils, you know, a wrongdoing by some council uh, before. So my vote is to abstain. <laughs> yes. You have your right. I have my right. Okay, and Mayor Tom? Yes. That motion carried 401 with, with Vice Mayor Nguyen abstaining. All right. Uh, next item 5.8 proposed resolution denouncing the mayor, Mark 4, 2019 resolution accommodation to Milton Bank 8K. The road can go. Could uh, someone read the uh, resolution so that we can go on it? Um, what are we reading? Like the whole resolution? Uh, yes, please, for the record. Thank you. Okay. Resolution of City Council of City of Westminster denouncing the resolution of accommodation issued to Nontang Lung, a.k.a. Veronica Ngo, whereas on March 4, 2019, Mayor Tree Ta issued a resolution of accommodation to Nontang Lung, a.k.a. Veronica Ngo, resolution of accommodation for her contributions to, at, to the entertainment industry and commitment to artistic expression and the performing arts. And at its meeting on September 22, 2021, the majority of the city council voted via minute order to denounce the issuance of this resolution of commendation. Whereas the city council would like to take action to more formally 
officially denounced the issuance of the resolution, resolution of commendation through the adoption of this resolution. And now, therefore, be it resolved by the City Council of the City of Westminster that by majority vote of the City Council formally denounces the issuance of the resolution of commendation issued to Ngo Tang Bang, a.k.a. Veronica Ngo, or Veronica Ngo on March 4, 2019. And that's it. Go to approve. I have a question. Do you have a second? I have a question uh, to uh, our city attorney. City attorney. Question. Yes, okay, so, um, you know, at our last meeting, you stated that we cannot rescind and that we could denounce, but I found out that we could rescind with three votes with a majority at the minimum. So what's up with that? I don't wanna, part of the difficulty here is that we discussed this issue before I was ever involved back in 2019. And at that time it was discussed and I was consistent with that. I still hold that the council authorized a process where individual council members could issue these resolutions. And so whether it was issued by Mayor Ta or issued by Contreras or someone else, the council can always pass a resolution and they can denounce, or they could even, if you want, pass a resolution that rescinds. What I was talking about last time is what's the actual impact? What, and what I said is, if, if the council has authorized the planning commission to issue resolutions, the council can't rescind that resolution itself. The planning commission has issued it, but the council can, in, in, in a sense, denounce it, overturn it, take other actions. So in a sense, that's what we have here. The council authorized individual council members to issue a resolution of commendation. And so technically speaking, you cannot rescind it. And I get it that people are saying, but the council can pass any resolution at once. Yes, they can. And if you want to pass a resolution that says that it rescinds it, you can do that. So I'm not going to say that you cannot do that. Um, what I was trying to clarify last time is what you could clearly do is do what you're doing today, which is a resolution denouncing, which is essentially saying we completely disagree with it. Well, you know? I, if you if you don't if you don't disagree that we rescind, then we should rescind. So I make a substitute motion to rescind, or I would like to go ahead and be, uh, let the. Um, did the motion maker change that to rescind, rescinding? I really think that there's, you know, that that whole email going to Miss uh, Dow Tran is really, you know, it's, it's this whole thing between denouncing and rescinding. I mean, I, I mean, it is within our right to rescind. So why don't we rescind? Okay, I'm going to withdraw my motion. That last uh, woman. Um, Oh, make Do you want okay, to change your motion? You know, or? as I recall, uh, I, the last, uh, you, you, I want you to make that motion, and uh, we okay. can second. Okay. okay. So if, I would propose what, that. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. I would. I would make a motion to rescind the mayor's March eight, uh, March fourth, two thousand nineteen resolution of commendation to Gotanvan, aka Veronica Ngo. Okay, and you want to change the resolution in the packet to change the word. But I'm sorry, you, break, you broke up. up. What? You want to change the resolution that's in the packet to change yes. the word denounced to rescind? Yes, of course, to match. You're an attorney, but how come you're not consistent, you know, from the last meeting? Okay, I am, I am being consistent. I said the legal effect, the council can pass a resolution that it wants the illegal effect of it is you cannot rescind something in this situation yeah. but they're saying they want to pass a resolution anyway they want to what they want to pass a resolution they want to rescind the resolution yes but they the rescind it. says that it rescinds and the, a majority of the council could do that it, the legal effect of it you can't rescind something that wasn't issued by this council right 
council did not never voted on that resolution to pass it. Right. So you can't rescind it, but okay. well, we but can majority could vote illegal. now. To we can rescind, make a, a, a resolution to rescind that illegal resolution that was issued uh, by the mayor in uh, 2019. So I, with that, I will second it. So to clarify, that's a motion to adopt this resolution, but amending it to say rescind instead of denounce? Yes. Okay. okay. So council member Doe? Yes. Council member Ho? Yes. Councilmember Monzo. Before I, before I vote, I want to say that the reason I'm voting the way I'm voting is because of what I saw was happening to our Vietnamese community back then. And it was, council was blind to, to the destruction of division that was causing in, in our Vietnamese community. And I, I felt it was wrong that council could not see that the mayor could not see that and that was upsetting to me back then and the reason i'm voting that's why i'm voting yes vice mayor Nguyen. petty politics no and mayor top no that motion carried three two with vice mayor Nguyen and mayor top voting no all right uh next item 6.1 resolution reaffirming uh, proclamation 20 uh, 01 and resolution number 4983, which declare the system of a local emergency. Move to approve. Okay. All right, we have the motion and second to approve this item. Hey, before we vote, can we can I have a, a, a question? To, um, so when do we plan to go back to a normal council meeting? Well, that'll be part of the next item. Oh, okay. Yeah. So that motion was made by council member Ho and a second by council member Monzo and that was to adopt a resolution entitled a resolution of the mayor and city council of the city of Westminster reaffirming proclamation number 2020 hyphen 01 and resolution number 4983, which declared the existence of a local emergency. Council member Doe? Yes. Council member Ho? Yes. Council member Monzo? Yes. Vice Mayor Nguyen? Yes. And Mayor Ta? Yes. That motion carried five to zero. Next item, six point two. Resolution to continue authorizing the conduct of remote telephonic meetings during the state of emergency. So move before, to Okay. Second. All right. So we have the motion and second to approve this item. Okay, so when do we plan to um, go back to a, a normal City council meeting. Uh, most most around cities uh, already have a normal uh, council meeting. Is that up to the city council or is it that is, city? Yeah. That is up to the that is up to the city council. So because of because of AB three sixty one, which we briefly discussed, you know, last meeting. Um, that allows us to continue these meetings um, through the end of 2023, but the city council has to uh, reaffirm or you know make the findings legally required findings to continue these Zoom meetings. Um, so you know we'll we'll reevaluate re reevaluate this every 30 days. Um, so it's really up to the discretion of the council. Yeah, we yeah, have to I, I, redo I, the findings every 30 days. Yeah, I, I really want to. Uh, go back to the normal council meeting um you know we heard um the report from the uh, the, the county um regarding the covid uh, rate has been uh, reduced and uh more than 85 percent of the residents uh 
had at least one uh, shot of vaccine. So um, I, I think we need to seriously consider um, to have a normal meeting in the city council chambers. Thank you. I would say, um, I wanna add to that is that I actually saw the dividers, um, those are up. So, you know, the dividers between all the council members. So I think that, uh, I mean, I would feel safe going, uh, you know, and have an in-person meeting. So I think, uh, I know that's been up for like at least a week or two. Mm -hmm. So if staff wanna mention anything about that. Sure, I mean, I, when I could or Jake could, but yes, we um, we had ordered plexiglass dividers. So there are plexiglass dividers installed where, you know, up at the dais and then down below where staff seating is. We also have, um, we're, we're also gonna be limiting the seating inside the chambers as well. So in the audience, you're only looking at about 17 people in there. That would include, you know, any staff members that need to be in there. And then for um, members of the public, we're still going to be requiring masks because for indoors, we're still requiring masks. If, and we don't know, we, we can't ask people coming in if they're vaccinated or not. So we're just making sure everyone wears a mask. So again, it's really up to the discretion of the city council if you want to go back to, um, you know, in-person meetings. I, I understand other cities are, you know, a lot of them are, you know, going back in person, but um you know, it's again at the comfortability of, of the council and, and of course you know, for uh, for safety concerns if there are any. Can 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 I ask um, staff that uh, we still maintain like uh, wearing masks uh, to come into the city and at the same time you know uh, one by one uh, we are not allowed them to go through like normal process. They have to go through like um, you know a two appointment or something like that. Uh, why, why, why? If if we feel that um, there's no need to, uh, there is no uh, worries of uh, COVID, then why we continue to do so? Is there any concern that you have there? Oh well, I'm, well, I'm I'm not saying that there are that we as staff don't have concerns. We have staff. We as staff, you know, have concerns um, on the side, especially public interfacing, and and that's at least for the city hall side. You know, we have the appointment system because that's just for. That's just for people management and workload management um, so that, you know, when people are coming in, they're not waiting ridiculously long times to talk to, you know, a planner or to, you know, or someone or an inspector or, or whoever that they're here to see. So the appointment system is is really just to streamline our process. Um, we are still requiring masks for people that are in the um, in the main lobby area. So if you're going to be interacting with other people, because, again, we have our roles internally as far as, um, you know, if you are vaccinated and this is just following OSHA, but if you're, if you're vaccinated, um, then you do not need to wear a mask inside the, you know, internal work area. Um, if you are unvaccinated, then you wear a mask. Um, and then if you are in any public area where you're gonna be exposed to a member of the public indoors, um, then you also wear a mask. So that's why when you come in City Hall, you'll see the front counter uh, staff will have masks on. So, um, so we do have those, uh, those in place. So there is, there is a concern. Um, you know, there's still, there's still a concern that exists because, you know, we do know people who have been vaccinated who, you know, may have gotten it. And then we, we know people who have been, you know, who, who've had COVID and are not vaccinated. And so we want to make sure that we're being respectful to both sides and keeping both sides safe. So Still, still concerns. Yeah, thank you. All right, so we have the motion and a second on the floor. So that motion was made by Mayor Tom and seconded by Vice Mayor Nguyen, and that was to adopt a resolution entitled a resolution of the Mayor and City Council of the City of Westminster, making the legally required finding, findings to continue to authorize the conduct of remote telephonic meetings during the state of emergency. Council Member Doe? Yes. Council Member Ho? Yes. Council Member Monzo? Yes. Vice Mayor Nguyen? Yes. And Mayor Ta? Yes. That motion carried five to zero. All right, next item 6.3 request for a resolution for the city council meeting at German time. I move to approve. Uh, 
We actually don't, so we actually don't have anything to prove at the moment um, because this is where a little bit of discussion is required. So this was a request from council member uh, Monzo to uh, place an item to discuss, you know, ending the meeting um, at a particular time and then perhaps, you know, extending that meeting with a four fifths vote. Um, we just did a quick staff report that shows some of the policies that um, other cities have as far as, you know, what, what they do when they reach a, a certain time. So, um, you know, Costa Mesa, they, they have a midnight time, um, Irvine also at midnight, um, San Clemente, Manhattan Beach, 11 p.m., Huntington Beach, 11 p.m. And um, it, it basically just requires, you know, a majority vote um, to continue the meeting. Again, if, uh, if council, you know, wishes to adopt some kind of resolution that will do that, staff will come back with that resolution, depending on what um, what council's direction is and, and what time, you know, and, and what time you would like to, uh, to conclude the meeting. So the direction, the, so the staff looking for direction from council to whether uh, agree with uh, the recommendation from council member uh, Menzo, right? Yeah, his, his recommendation right now is to um, adopt a resolution to end the meeting at midnight unless the meeting is extended by a four-fifths vote. Very no well, so I'm going to adopt, uh, I'm going oh, to nice. move to adopt that uh, resolution then. Thank you, Vice Mayor, for your, for all your help. Um, well, I'm rethinking this, this matter. The reason this is in front of us is, is pretty obvious as far as down here, the whole gist of what we're doing we need to strive for to be have be as much open and transparency as possible with the public. Um, obviously, when the meetings run past midnight, when they run past midnight, we're not the public don't have the, the ease to stay up past midnight. And if they want to find out what's ha what happened at a council meeting, they gotta go back through the minute meetings and video and watch the. So we're not doing our community uh, justice by running our meetings so late. And the second part of that is because our, our staff, it's not fair to our staff as well. Um, we're, us, we're in the, except the mayors at the off, at city hall, but the rest of us have the luxury of being at home. And, and when the meeting's over, you know, we get to we get to be you know go right to bed and staffs there, so I mean I've heard stories of staff leaving city hall at three in the morning, and being back, you know some of them had to be back at seven seven thirty and and the ruins that their next day Thursday they're not it's just not a productive day and they lose they're actually losing two days, you know a second day of, of productivity because they can't even get through the day they've been up all night. So, I mean, it's not fair. It's, it's pretty obvious we got to do something about it. But at the same time, um, instead of starting at seven, I think we need to change our meeting, st meeting time to start at six. Uh, many other cities, surrounding cities, uh, start their meetings at six. And we're, for some reason, I don't know, we're, as far as I can tell, we're one of, I don't think there's another city that starts that as late as we do. That's another reason why our meetings run so long. So my 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 motion is to to have our meetings start our regular meetings at six p.m. and the rest of it I want to follow the Costa Mesa's policy as far as except for the, with the simple majority that the meetings can be extended past midnight. Mm -hmm. And and, I, and, I, and I same with that motion, I want to add that that this the, the consideration to extend the meeting be conducted that uh, that there's a agenda item that finished at 11:45 p.m. that the, a vote take place at that time to to extend it or not. You know the the reason I agree with you on that is because you know. Um, the, the meeting is you know, dragging so long, but I remember if you remember, uh, you know, back a couple of months ago, that there are a couple of uh, council members saying that, you know, if we need to, we can stay up to two o'clock or three o'clock in the morning. Okay. 
That were, that's why the, the meeting continued to run due to the request of the council members. Okay, I believe that the, the mayor is trying to satisfy the council member by you know letting the, the, the meeting go o, o, over time. Yeah, I, I, I remember that. Okay, but, but so this, you know, this is a case that we live and learn, and obviously it's been it's been a problematic for for our staff. It's problematic for the public. We're not doing justice to the public by being open and transparent. So this is why we need to adjust to right or wrong. Well, if I may uh, stick my two cents in right, right then and there, uh, is that uh, number one, not only do we, um, you know, I know your proposal is to adjust the time uh, that we start our meeting, but we also need to, and I think we, spoke about it a little bit earlier that our how we behave as a council how we should not um, speak over one another and how what blah 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 so those are some of the things that we could do to move things along quickly and then you know how we agendize things and stuff like that so it's really not uh, not about uh, not wanting to end at midnight but it about you know making sure we get, as much done as possible uh, by adjusting so many different things, so many different, uh, um, shall I say, uh, you know, uh, there are a lot of different um, reasons why we run over time and then we need to work on those reasons. So, so um, you know, so I, I understand why, I don't know who it was that made that comment at the, uh, that uh, Chief Charlie was talking about uh, that, you know, we should, we could be here until way past, until way past mis midnight, as long as we get our um, ag agendas uh, done um, and go through all of our agendas. Um, so I do remember that, but tonight we're talking about, you know, various um, you know, things that we should do or should be implementing in order to get uh, to get th more things done at a, a more reasonable time. Yeah, but there's nothing written down that we follow that. So this is we need here. It seems. Yeah, to may, go ahead. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Make some comments. You know, um, this is a this is a good item um, to um, for the council to discuss. Um, keep in mind that we are. Uh, this happened when we have only one meeting a month. I mean, you know, we go, this is a, 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 the first meeting after three weeks, right? Since the last one, not two weeks, three weeks. No, um, we, had, we had our previous meeting. Just, just, two weeks ago or three weeks ago? Two. Three weeks ago, I think. Right? So anyway, um, you know, I think we uh, we looking at a, a, a high definition uh, TV beautiful photo picture and then we would just focus on one bad pixel um that, that we are running late but we need to understand why we're running late i think it's a combination of things the combination that uh, the person in charge running the uh the meeting allow some of the council member rambling just to get a leg up on the others uh, some of the nonsense that needs to be cut up immediately and move on. Um, you know, so uh, we need to know how to run the, the, uh, the city council uh, meeting a little more effectively. What important, what's not important, we need to uh, clarify that and uh, um, run it uh, more efficiently, you know. Um, you know to, uh, to me, I mean, you know, we only meet by once every once a month, I I, uh, I understand there's going to be a lot of item on the agenda. Um, you know, we talk about emotional uh, issues uh, that cause people to uh, speak and enroll to two hours of public comments. Uh, we need to focus on that. We need to, you know, we uh, but by moving the time from seven to six, I don't think it's going to be uh, a good idea because we talked about we talked about this a couple of years ago when you back in 2019, where the uh, council meeting you know were very emotional and very highly charged. Um, there was a an effort to move the meeting at an earlier time so that those 
who want to attend the meeting uh, could not make it because they had to go to work. So uh, that's the reason why we still we we have a little discussions about that back then two years ago. So we want really want to have the council meeting at seven so that um, all the residents have a chance to participate because a lot of residents complain that the meeting was moved to six instead of seven. So, uh, you know, um, I just throwing this out so that the, uh, you know, we can have some idea uh, what, what, you, what, uh, what to do. Uh, moving, changing to six will not uh, help, okay? If we don't know how to manage running the, uh, the, the meeting uh, efficiently, uh, arousing a lot of rambling uh, on nonsense stuff. Um, and uh, we have to, uh, you know, the cutoff point midnight is, is good. But at the same time, we need to limit. If we limit uh, the the um, the cutoff time at midnight, we need to limit the public speaking, public comments. I'm not I'm not talking about uh, cutting the public comments shorter than five minutes. I, I, I suggest that we cut it off at maximum two hour or ninety minutes of public comments. And after that, we need to shut it down and move on uh, with the regular uh, business, uh, with the meeting. So if we, we, we wanted uh, to fix, I mean, we need to look at the totality of the circumstances, what caused us to run to, you know, past midnight, one o'clock, 2.30 2 in the morning. Um, you know, I, I don't want to stay in this meeting. I want to go to bed. Um, I don't, I, you know, this is, uh, but this is something that, that I felt that need to be done. So I never thought much of it. Uh, you know, just my um, uh, public service stay until we finish uh, taking care of business on, at, uh, as an elected official running, uh, uh, attending a city council meeting. So um, those are the points that we need to look at. Um, just fixing one thing, move, move the time. It's not going to uh, fix anything we need to fix everything. I don't, thank you. I, I thank you for yeah. your comments, council member, but um, I just don't know how we would create a policy that would manage the way that the council meeting is ran by, by the mayor. Um, I All right, so- Mayor uh, has the discretion to- Can I speak? Uh, yes. So- uh, Mayor has the discretion to run the meeting the way he fits, feels that he needs to run the meeting. Um, so I mean like the reality here that because there are so many items on agenda in one meeting and the reality that I want to inform the public that most of the uh, taking time item come from council member in, individually. And I mean, in the past, uh, we discussed this before. And I think that every council member, you know, the majority of the council you all want to have your own item on agenda. And, you know, a lot of item, I look at agenda, a lot of item, that's why the meeting really take long. Uh, and the nature of the item is really track meeting, you know, after midnight. So it's not, you know, how, you know, how we all conduct the meeting, but it's about, you know, the council member, you schedule your own item and many, many items. I look at it, I look at agenda tonight. You know, half of agenda item come from council member. And I mentioned that in the past, you know, it's ideally two council member can discuss one item. That's not a proud act violation and schedule an item on agenda. That's going to be helpful. That really help the staff you know, and help the whole city council, you know, at the end. And I mean, I do not agree with council member though, when you uh, try to uh, point finger at the council member, hey, we are human, I respect all four of you. Even with this, you know, we do not have to agree on every single issue. But when the other council member speak or make any statement, you may not have to agree whatever he said, but that council member had the right to say accordingly. So that's why I want to remind all the council members, 
Half of the item on the agenda come from the council item. And we have to accept that, that's a fact. And if we continue to discuss point finger on other council member, that's not going to be helpful. The other council member have to, you know, make another statement to respond. So the meeting going to be longer. So I mean like, ideally, if the meeting end at midnight, that's helpful. Okay. Oh, thank you, Mayor, for your comments. That's, all those are all good points from both Mayor and Council Member Doe, but we've been trying, always been talking about creating policy to, so we don't skew from it and just, we're just operating on the honor system and that doesn't hold anybody to it. The mayor runs the meeting the way the mayor feels fit to run the meeting. And there's nothing you can do about it. Um, we're, I think we're doing an injustice to our, our residents by running our meetings so late. Um, I feel that we're doing an injustice to our staff you see the issues that we have with our staff um, where, where council meetings are are being dreaded. I, I, I guarantee you that most of our staff doesn't, is not having fun and we need to fix that. That's an issue. And I just feel that looking at how many other surrounding cities start their meeting at six, I, I, I don't understand why we couldn't do the same and have some sort of, you know, a policy that makes sense for the public, policy that makes sense for staff and it makes sense for council. But that's just how I feel. Um, so, you know, right now, just to um, deal with this issue right now, how about um, I, I, I make a, a motion to, um, stop the meeting at midnight and whatever item left will have take priority for the, the next council meeting uh, and uh, see how that work and then we will uh, discuss as uh, time go on to see if that's appropriate but uh, we need to um, take action instead of you know lip service no i told i totally agree with that why don't we defer you know the rest of item for the next council meeting then so you're, you're, you're suggesting just to stop it, the meeting, Matt, at the latest 12 p.m. and- uh, Midnight. Midnight. Midnight, and then continue uh, yeah. whatever item uh, yeah. left on the agenda until the next meeting. No, 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 no council vote, no nothing, just stop it. I, think. I, I would encourage you to have the option for an exception, like, you know, if a four-fifths or a majority Vote. Oh yeah, absolutely. Oh yeah, with with the uh, with the uh, majority uh, four fifth vote, we can. Um, so which one? Four, four, whatever. Uh, four out of five, or I might no, make make it. You don't want to make it just a simple majority. It's like three out of five. Okay. Okay. Yeah. That's it's better to give yourself some flexibility there because, like for example, if we weren't able to get to that telephonic item. Um, you know, we'd be past the deadline. So you definitely want to get some flexibility for any of those time sensitive items that are still lingering after midnight. So um, what, do you, what, do you, what do you suggest? What do you no, so, so it would, yeah. So not just necessarily stopping it at midnight, but giving yourselves that option to make that vote so that you can, you know, continue certain items. Cause there, there will be, a, there may be a situation at some point where there's an item that, you know, is legally binding. You have to do, you, you know, you have to take action on. Um, and it's, you know, teetering a little past midnight. So this is, so what I have so far is that you're looking at doing a resolution to end the meeting at midnight with a simple majority vote. Um, and um, we're not, we're not looking at starting the meeting at six, correct? No. Uh, council doesn't seem to be up for it. Uh, you know, the, the reason we, uh, we want to, uh, have it start at seven because of the community's uh, request, the resident request, because they, most people will uh, uh, work during the day and they need to rush home from, from fine, you know, do some errand to pick up the kids and they don't have time to uh, make it to the council meeting by six. So that's a, that was that was a reason uh, that was brought up a couple of years ago. 
I remember so, you brought that up. <laughs> um, um, so, okay. Since this is addressed in the city's code, I, I think you should amend the, the code section as a, with an ordinance to yeah. change the section dealing with time. It talks about when the meetings are held and what time. So I think that would be an appropriate place to put it. Okay. That would be my suggestion. Provide right. direction to amend the, uh, the ordinance then. So we'll come back with a draft ordinance at the next meeting. Okay, well, I'll, we second, I'll second uh, Councilmember Doe's. Thank you. Can, can, can I ask that uh, for um, those CDs that you listed in the um, we'll stop report, mm -hmm. are they requiring four fifth vote uh, to continue the meeting or I saw that Huntington Beach, they don't, they without majority vote, they end it at 11, no matter what, right? No, it, it, that one just says no meeting shall continue beyond 11. Right, um, right. Without, yeah, so without the majority right, votes. Right. Right. You can. But so for you, Manhattan Beach is a four fifth vote. Yeah, Manhattan Beach was four fifth vote, but all the other cities that were listed there were just majority. So in this what about case, Costa Mesa? Costa Mesa is just my majority. Majority. But they have seven council members now. So yeah. <laughs> their majority is larger. <laughs> I have a question to ask all the council member uh, since we uh, discussed about the item regarding the time of the meeting. Uh, I look at the rest of the item. I mean, I need, I need, I think that if the council continue with all the rest of the item, it's going to be like at least a few hours, a few more hours. And I, I know that uh, some of us have to go to work early tomorrow. And if you want, so, I recommend that, why don't we defer the rest of the item for the next meeting? Because I mean, I don't mind. I mean, I don't mind to continue the meeting, but it's going to be like long hours. Yeah, I just want to uh, state the fact in advance because I look at the nature of, you know, this item, it's going to take long and council members have the right to ask a lot of questions for every single item and you know either ask that or discuss among us. Yes. So I recommend if the council okay with that. So I we I like to, you know, end a meeting now and then we defer for the next council meeting because I think that's like staff have to have to go to work tomorrow too. Well, I would like to, um, I would like to second that. However, uh, I would like to see if we can move item 7.1 which is the appointment to the Quanchi Monument. We do have one vacancy. We'd like to have that filled, please. So, I mean, after that- um, Before one, before we move on, though, did we take action on 6.3? We need to take a vote on that? Take action yes. on item 6.3 first, yes, correct. Yes, correct. We should take a vote on that and we can discuss about the 7.3 maybe. So do we have, we have a motion and a second. Okay, so council member Doe? Uh, yes. Council member Ho? Council member Ho? Yes, sorry. Council member Monzo? Yes. yes. Vice Mayor Nguyen? Yes. And Mayor Ta? Yes. Yes. That motion carried five to zero. So we need another motion to move 7.1 forward. We normally do. So I think I think we need another motion, right, to move item 7.1 forward and then defer the rest of the item. So I make the motion to move item 7.1 forward and defer the rest of the item to the next council meeting. A second. That motion was made by Mayor Chan, second by Council Member Ho, uh, to move item 7.1 forward and defer all outstanding items to the next council meeting. So, Council Member Doe? Yes. Council Member Ho? Yes. Mayor, uh, Council Member Monzo? Yes. Vice Mayor Nguyen? Yes. And Mayor Ta? Yes. So, uh... that motion. That motion carried five to zero. Thank you. So, so when item uh, 
Chairman Poi Wan, appointment to Wang Pei Monument Committee to unschedule vacancy. Yes, I would like to, um, I know that um, Arvin member Julie Doan, Julie Doan um, has resigned due to her uh, health issues um, that she mentioned. And uh, I would like to um, appoint uh, Kenneth Pham, uh, who is number seven on the list there to replace her. Second. That was a motion made by Council Member Ho and a second by Council Member Monzo to appoint Kenneth Fan as a regular member for a term to expire upon the disbandment of the committee. So, Council Member Doe? Yes. Council Member Ho? Yes. Council Member Monzo? Yes. Vice Mayor Nguyen? I have known this person very well, and I have no respect for, the, for him, so my vote is no. And Mayor Ta? What was that? Abstain. Yes. That All motion right, so carried 3-1-1 with Vice Mayor Nguyen voting no and Mayor Ta abstaining. Okay, so before we adjourn the meeting, uh, any comment from city council agency member in lieu AB 1234? So I'd like to make a really good report that last month, uh, Vice Mayor Nguyen and myself, we participated in a Lake City a conference in Sacramento, and Vice Mayor, Vice Mayor Nguyen really helpful. So he participated, uh, he and myself participated in several workshops in the uh, convention in Sacramento. So we want to thank Vice Mayor Nguyen. So that is my AB1234 report. Okay. Any council member uh, want to report anything? Yeah, I just want to report that I um, attended the, the, the city for City of Cypress. And um, it was uh, a surprise for me that uh, there are not many uh, uh, officer from the, the other city, elected official from the other city attend, uh, attended the, the event. I know that um, Mayor uh, Shearer uh, from the city of Stanton, uh, he signed up for that, but he wasn't there. Uh, that's all I know. Uh, but uh, important that was, uh, you know, it's, it's very interesting that they have a chance to go over, you know, the, the state of the city for the last several months, especially during COVID time. And uh, guess who that I'm, uh, uh, guess who I met there? there? We all know about it, right? We might forget, uh, you know, who, who was there. Uh, basically, our um, former uh, police chief, uh, Mark Lauderdale, you know, we have a you know, good time, um, uh, you know, talking about it. And then, uh, you know, uh, and surprisingly that uh, he moved there. But, uh, you know, this is the first time they recognize him, uh, you know, on the big screen, you know, recognize and welcome him uh, uh, as a, a police chief for the city of Cypress. Uh, I guess because they had, they didn't have the chance to have a big event just like uh, state of the city. So this is the first time that they they uh, formally um, you know welcome him. Uh, so it's, it, it was a very nice event that I, I attend. So um, anyway, uh, that's uh, for my uh, AB one two three four. All right, any other council member for AB one two three four report? And as for myself, uh, I attended Placentia, State of the City. I know that uh, Councilmember T. Charlie uh, also signed up but did not show up. And uh, so that was a bit of a waste of a city money. Um, and um, I, you know, really enjoyed my visit there and uh, uh, inadvertently found out about our chief uh, of uh, our new chief of police who's coming from, who's from the uh, city of Placentia. So I, I know that we've um, mentioned, speaking of the chief of police, our police chief, who uh, are we going to introduce him tonight? Oh, when do we get to see him? Because I know that introduction has taken place publicly, correct? Uh, that might be a question for our city manager. He's on November 1st. 
Well, I'm sorry? He starts November 1st, so introductions will happen. Ah, oh, got it. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. That's all I have to say. Thank you. All right. If uh, any customer don't have any other AB1234 report, that's the most important part. If not, if I, if no, oh, any comment? Oh, I'm sorry. Just member Menzo. Any, anything else? Yeah, thank you, Mayor. Um, I just want to thank staff for um, all your hard work and your dedication to our city and, and putting up with the with us, our council here. So I was going to say, but thank you, anyways. I really appreciate all your hard work. Thank you, Council, for, uh, for all your hard work as well. All right. Yeah, but could you, uh, if someone would be so kind, let me know the correct pronunciation of the new chief last name, please. Lenye, Lenye, Lenye. It's Lenye, like a like a Benye. That's the easiest way to remember. Oh, Lenye. Lenye. I was just want to congratulate uh, Lenye for being selected uh, selected to be our next uh, chief of police of the board. See you and congratulations, Christine, for being our uh, interim uh, city manager. Uh, congratulations for the trust of the county uh, help running the city. All right, so then I will uh, I will join the rest of the council to extend our congratulations to the new chief police for our city. I think Sorry. that. Uh, I had accidentally muted Councilmember Dome. It's oh, okay. I didn't know. I'm so sorry. I, 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 I was being silent by our news interim city manager. That's not a good start. Uh, anyway, um, I don't know. I, I, my congratulations to you got cut off. Uh, but uh, anyway, I, I heard that uh, Diane uh, Dober is going to retire her last day on December 3rd. I uh, just want to thank you, Diane, for all your good work that you've done for the city and all the uh, amazing uh, community um, program that you have implemented uh, and provided to uh, our um, residents, especially the seniors. And I heard that Alexa uh, found uh, a new, can I say Alexa now? <laughs> Well, oh. we technically yeah. hadn't put it out there yet, but since oh. it's out there now, um, yes, Diana Daubert is retiring and Alexis Middle <laughs> is moving on to greener pastures. And so yeah. her yeah. last day is on November 5th. Um, but an official, I guess that's the sneak peek, but the official um, announcements will be coming out tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Alexa is going to be a big loss, but I'll see. She's, been, yeah, she's amazing and I uh, really admire her uh, good work. Uh, so, uh, it's our loss, and uh, I just want to congratulate uh, and, hope, and wish Alexa a, a successful in her uh, next endeavor. So, again, thank you, uh, city staff. Sorry we have to stay late uh, for the council meeting, but uh, I, I really, uh, deep down at the bottom of my heart, really appreciate your hard work. So, thank you very much, and thank you, council. All right. I just want to say something really quickly, Mayor, if I may. Uh, yeah. I, I, I would refuse to say goodbye to Alexa Smittle. So, I'm hoping she changed her mind between now and then, uh, her last day. So I'm still working on uh, changing her mind, which I, I like I said, I'm, I won't hold my breath. Thank you. All right. Uh, I think that all customers already said what they need to. Uh, so uh, our next regular meeting will be on Wednesday, October 27, 2021, at 7 p.m. Meeting now adjourned. Thank you, everyone.